you got caught on the beach somewhere in New York on your in your Lamborghini LMO2 the Lima doing like 120 yeah. on the beach and you know that, that's hard to do on a sand you know what I mean Hummers can't even do that that Lambo car is like it's an artifact that's like a you can't get that you were like one of the only people I think that I ever had like was that the G the, the, G, the Lamborghini G, LMO2 yeah. LMO2 oh, that's Lima a trip. Yeah. yeah I never you, drove one before oh, he explained that to you about the LMO2 Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Evan Britton. And I'm Mike Tyson. Man, Mike, we got a great guest oh, today, Oh man, he got, he's bringing back memories too. He's, <laughs> man, he's a professional. He's a historian on the car tips too. Oh yes, he is. Ben Baller, welcome my brother. What's, What's up, on, Baller? How you doing, man? Good to have it. you, man. God ben bless, Baller, man. I love that name. It's a great name. <laughs> and you know what's funny is when I heard the name, I thought that it was about like you're a baller with money and yeah. all your shit. But Didn't it's actually because you're a baller yeah. on the field playing football and basketball. Yeah. I was the first Asian in my university to ever do do both. That's big I didn't, time, I didn't play a lot, but I got my PT. And when I did, I, you know, I was, I was a, I felt like I was a late learner with learning plays, but my coach was like, yo, you're uncoachable, but you got a lot of talent and <laughs> you just don't have the genetic, you know, build to do what you do. But, you know, we'll get into that, man. It was just, yeah, just absolutely. some funny shit. I thought that was dope as hell though, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. So um, I, I was a young kid, I'm probably 21, so I moved to this place called Bernardsville, New Jersey. And Bernardsville, New Jersey is a very, um, the people that lived there, like Eminem, the Mars family and stuff like that, uh, the Inglehart family, the people that they- Big wealth. Yeah, the people that 007, um, Gold The Vanderbilt was, type people, yeah. yeah. They, they lived yeah. there, yeah. The Diamond Jim Brady and those guys lived there. So one day, I'm, 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 I just moved in the neighborhood, Bernardsville, right? And the who comes visit me? I'm Malcolm Forbes. All right, and know what he's driving? A green LM002 yeah. Lamborghini truck. And I said, what is that? I didn't yeah. even say that. Yeah. How you doing, Mr. Forbes? I, didn't even, I said, what is no. that? Yeah. What is that? Uh, he's telling no. me about it. As soon as, I, as soon as I found out how to get one, I got one, man. I had around four. Man, it was just, there, there, there's a couple around. But a lot of people didn't obviously like that. You know, they don't they, make the parts no more. Yeah, not just that. They made them. They made so few back yes. then, and there was some issues with the, from back then. Oh, the motor. Yeah, they yeah. did have issues. So the people who do have them, these are guys who have, you know, hundred million dollar car collections. You oh, know, yeah. you, you you was in it deep. So, I mean, you're the go to guy. For the jewels, for the yeah, diamonds. This, hey, I knew nothing about you when this came. It was some other guy, this Algerian guy from Africa that was the guy for one moment around here um, giving the celebrities. He was he came after. Oh, you know what, actually? Uh, he came after... Um, after Jacob. Jacob. Yeah, yeah, his name exactly. was Chris Ayer. Yeah. Chris Ayer's a, a African dude. He's a... You know what, tell you the truth, man? He was a little bit of inspiration to me as well when I was coming up because uh, my professional career out the gate was music and DJing. So I was a nightclub DJ and was going out. Um, the second time I ever saw you in public was at the Roxbury nightclub, the legendary Roxbury yeah. on Sunset. And uh, I remember walking in there and I shouldn't have been in there because I was, I was too young. I was still in college and I saw Sylvester Stallone. I saw like, just like, these are like, come on, like now you see like a YouTube star, be like, oh, that guy has 10 million followers. Like, who gives a Who fuck, gives bro? a fuck? Come on, man. Dude. This is Rocky, bro. This is yeah. Mike fucking Tyson. And here's Magic Johnson. It was, it yeah. was crazy in there, right? I, I you know, I was, I've been in love with hip hop and, and since the, since eighties. And so, um, Ice-T is kind of like my unofficial godfather. He kind of took me in. I met him in 82 and I was breakdancing then at this club in LA and, um, Mike Tyson and we sh and shooting a movie called Break in There. So, you know, for a long time I was in hip hop and then elevated into the professional side of the career and then after that i just got so sick of music and it wasn't about i i, I, I hated music i got sick of the music business and it was very similar to any sport where you got managers and lawyers and and agents and people all in your pockets and all kinds of shit and i was like yo man this is some real scumbag shit because a lot of these people don't know how to read a contract and even if they have an attorney that attor it's like five attorneys that run three hundred thousand yeah. different rappers you know what i mean or, or yeah. singers and it's like Yo, this dude doesn't know what the fuck he's right. Well, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, listen, half my family is Jewish and whatever, but like you got all the Jewish attorneys who are like, like, fuck it, don't worry about it. It's okay. You know, they have a chance to go over it. And if there's something they don't understand, boom. But some of these kids had no other options, so they wanted to get on. Yeah. So you tell me this. What are we gonna do about that? 
that right there what you're talking about, where this industry is ran by a certain amount of people that really don't give a fuck because there's nowhere else you can go but us. Um, mm. I mean, we have to somehow campaign to push these young brothers that, listen, school wasn't for me. If I didn't get a scholar, I was the only person in my school that didn't academically excel. My brother went to school with the Kennedys. We came from a poor family. My brother went to Phillips Academy, you know, school, Andover. You know, my sister was at Exeter. Like, you're talking about, they went to school with the Kennedys, these people. That was off education because my dad whooped our asses. Like, we could never beat our kids' asses the way my, my no, dad No, I know. What, listen, I'm experienced. I'm a little older than you, so I know what it's yeah. like. If you're from a poor family, the only thing they know is to beat you into submission. Yeah. So, you know, now with these kids... They they just they don't they don't want to they don't want to they don't want to marinate they don't want to season the meat they want to just eat that fast food and go they want to get their contract they want to get fucked but the people who are mm. smart and let it let it sit a little bit sit it stir in the pot a little bit they're getting the right attorney they're getting the right advice or they're going independent taking more of their masters owning more of their own thing and what I was getting at when you're talking about Chris Air and stuff it's unfortunate because you know. I came in the game with no like real like you know most of, most of the jewelry people it's like it's like you got people in Africa who run the trade and you know it's it's predominantly white but it's like there's not a lot of jewelers that were doing what I was doing when I won jeweler of the year um, two years ago this is like there's millions of jewelers in the world you know what I mean from high to low people who you know are handling billions of dollars of diamonds and I'd like to say you know just because I grew up in the hood all my life being a person of color you know I was proud to accept that award. But I went out there and wore this nice Dior suit and my sister put me in and the lady's like, yo, what are you doing? And I was like, fuck you mean what am I doing? It's a $6,000 suit. I'm, you know, I'm about to ball out. You know what you mean? She goes, no, go back upstairs and wear your street clothes. Put on your Supreme, put on your shit and show your tattoos. She's like, what do you mean? Because you opened up an entire unorthodox way of being a jeweler. We're not wearing a polo, not wearing a button down, not wearing, and going out there and wearing tattoos and talking the way you do on your social media. You know, I was like, bro, that's me. That's just, I don't want to not be me because mm -hmm. every time I haven't, I've regretted it. Mm. So with Chris Eyre, I don't know where he is now, but I'm like, yo, people will sit there and hate and talk shit. They don't know about my background and be like, yo, how come there's not more black jewelers out there? And I'm like, because, it, it, you know, it, there's there's people fucking hating on their, their parcels. Parcel is like how you buy diamonds and stuff, right? And they'll be like, yo, they might see like, oh, Jamal Johnson and just immediately stereotype, oh, this guy's buying, who is this guy? You know, do we know this guy? Oh, boom. Oh, you know what? We ran out. We don't have any. It's just like on some shit. It's, it's, every business has it, but like with attorneys and everything, I mean, there just needs to be more people of color in charge who are more fair. People in more, there's no black jewelers that I could think of. I can't even think of one, hmm. do you know, out there. So it's like, you know, um, there just has to be, it's, it's, and it's not even like, it is education, but it's more information. I feel like we just need to, well, information is great. Nothing yeah. more important than information, right? Information. But information is only good once you're brought into the brought into the subject. Once you brought into the club, then the information's good. Yeah. But once you're on the outside, right. you can't. You have to be able to you get. Can't it. use it. He needs a mentor. Somebody. Th that's black what, I'm sorry. That's what it is. Somebody black in this community that wants to be in the diamond business needs a mentor. I don't know if he's Jewish, white, whoever's in that business that right. say, hey, this isn't fair. We're getting all these fucking diamonds from Africa. It's not a black motherfucker or African motherfucker that owns any part of this. So we need to make something happen. And because of that, I, and, and, and shout out to my boy Frank Brown who works here, right? He's like, Frank lived in Israel for a while. Yeah. And a lot of my diamonds came from Israel and India. I tried to avoid the Africa shit because, you know, you see what's going on over there and you're like, yo, man, I don't, I don't want no parts of this, right? But let me backtrack now to the attorney side. Um, and I know this doesn't really matter, but like my business manager is, Afri is African. He's black. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a brother. He's a, you know, he's a Muslim and he's OG. His dad used to run with public enemy and them. And I fuck with him heavy because he has such a dope list of clients. And um, sometimes people will be like, yo, uh, you don't have like, Goldberg or Steinberg or you know or this person r r holding your money I'm like nah bro what you mean and I'm the richest I've ever been in my entire life motherfucker like I'm paper yeah I got I got everything I need and yeah in fact this dude saved my life I owe the IRS paper you know what I mean and he got, came in and saved me and I was like yo I didn't give a fuck what color the person was personally and tell the truth I really don't in life with anything whether it be friendship business or anything there's stereotypes yes but who's best for the job that's what I want to know. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? That's just how I grew up because I grew up in a predominantly Latin and black neighborhood and now it's gentrified into, you know, Koreans and whatever. But you, you just have to have to have to mentor somebody. And I feel like that's another thing. I've, I've mentored people. I've been speaking at schools and stuff and like 
people are like, oh, you're just a jeweler. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> there's so much, mis you know, like lost information between these generations. They don't know, like, you know, that I was in music. They don't know that I was, you know, in, in sports. They don't know that I was, I, I have a lot of information. I know a lot of things, you know, but I, I need to, I need, I need, I need to do more work. Um, and, you know, my store was in the hood for a long time. It was one block away from Nipsey Hustle store. Oh, Sometimes wow. we need people to open the door for us. Yeah. No, for sure. You know? I mean, people open the door. Absolutely, man. Because a lot of us, because sometimes of our stereotype that we have, we become so stereotyped, we start to um, stereotype ourselves in life and say we can't do that because of who we are, where we're from, or where we've been associated with. And then sometimes, then when that happens, you get somebody that's, you say, he's in the world, he's connected, and he tells everybody, this person always said, no, I can't do this because I'm not. He tells everybody, this guy's this guy's with us now. He's one of us. Yeah. Like and a mafia. <laughs> and your whole fucking life change. They don't even see your color no more. Your whole fucking life change. It's true, though. You know, um, when I got into the music business, my best friend's dad is a very, 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 very powerful person in Hollywood, mostly in music. But he uh, produced the Rocky Horror Picture Show, started that. He did all the Cheech and Chong movies. He's a big activist in marijuana early. He owns the Rocks. He owns a lot of nightclubs. He produced the Mamas and the Papas, Carol King. He produced some of the biggest albums in the history of rock. He had a, a festival before Woodstock called the Monterey Pop Festival. His name is Lou Adler. And he took me in and became yeah, my godfather. Mm. And Lou Adler took me in. When I got my first job at Priority Records, I met Dr. Dre and Suge and, and all these guys at the nightclub I was DJing at that Denzel Washington owned. And that was where I met everybody. And I remember one night Dr. Dre walked in and it was like a night where the boss was like, hey man, none of that N-word music. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like, bro, come on, man. He's like, no N no. I need to play some motherfucking rock. If you want to play some <laughs> some Al Jarreau. If you want to play a little Michael Jackson, cool. But I don't want no, you know, no gangster shit. And I was like, fuck, man. <laughs> and he left. And I heard he was going to an Oscar De La Hoya fight. So he was going to Vegas on a jet. So I said, man, fuck this shit. I saw Dre sitting down. And I said, listen, man, there's a bunch of TVs, places called Creek Alley, it's a Jamaican restaurant on Melrose. They used to own Georgia, which is a block away too. Georgia was amazing fucking so Yeah, Georgia was a beautiful so Who same. Owned Georgia. I remember Georgia. Georgia back was in the Debbie day. Allen. Uh, yeah, back in the eighties, right? De Debbie Allen, Brad Johnson, uh I remember Brad Denzel. Fuck Brad Johnson from New York. Yeah. I know Brad very well. When yeah. I was in prison, he's always write me, Brad. Wow. Yeah, so Brad, uh Debbie Allen, uh Fuck Norm Nixon. Brad, that's so awesome. Yeah, Brad so so Johnson. Norm and, and Brad owned this piece too. So they all took off. And I said, fuck, because the crowd was mostly black. You know what I mean? I was like, man, it's a Jamaican yeah. restaurant. Fuck this. And we're open until <laughs> 2 in the morning. It get popping, right? So I turned off the fuck. I, I said, listen, I told everyone there. My boy was like, he's like, hey, man, all right, that's on you. I was like, let it be on me then. I put the Mac on one screen. I put Superfly on the other screen. I put fucking Kofi on the other one. And then I said, listen, I started out with some funk. James Brown, you know, some Roy Ayer, some jazz. And then I got into like, and then I got into some shit. And I remember Dr. Drake. I walk downstairs. He's having. A, I'll never forget. He had a long eyelash tea, and he's like, "Hey, <laughs> hey, youngster, what, what you know about all that up there?" And I was like, "Man, I just grew up listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire. You know, music was always my shit. You know, Parliament, Funkadelic, George Clinton." He was like, "Yo, man, let me get your. You got a number on you?" I gave him my pager number because uh, you know, gave my pager number. A week later, he hit me up. I'm in Death Row Studios. You know, we're, we're getting together. Boom. He's kind of about to make a move, leaving Death Row. So he put me with his OG label, Priority. And when I got there. I was like, all right, man, let me figure this out. And I got a lot of people hating on me. And meanwhile, you got all these people in black music, but you have all the lower level people that are the people of color, all the executives or the white folks, right? And I don't mean to say anything because I was like, white people here, but you know, they Fuck were like- Fuck white people, yeah, no, They were like, yo, what's this, what's this Chinese motherfucker know about hip hop? Like, first of all, I'm Korean. Second of all, like, I've been around this shit all my life. You know what I mean? It's in, it's in my heartbeat. So, you know- Get that shit out the way first. Because I was always that dude that was in there. We go back and forth. And um, within two years, I became vice president of the company. You know, we had Master P. We, I signed, you know, we signed Jay-Z. You know, we had Ice Cube. We had a lot of sh heavy hitters coming out of there. And I have to thank, you know, um, Dre and these guys because it was a black dude. And, and you know, and, and, and of course, Lou Adler and them, they got me this, this chance to get in there. But when it came to handling my contract, my employment contract, when I was actually going to get a six-figure contract, which was a lot then for, you know, for, for work, I had to hit up Lou Adler, like, yo, who do I get? Mm -hmm. And he's like, yo, man, you're going to work with this dude, Peter Paterno, who's actually Dr. Dre's still attorney. And Peter Paterno's a, a huge, he's like the Bob Shapiro, Johnny Cochran of, of entertainment lawyers. 
And I was like, all right, cool. Then I realized how different things were. And then I was like, yo, man, this is fucking crazy because I was about to sign this dude. I don't want to say his name, but he was an artist that was on a label that was in a group with Ice Cube. And then he came for a solo record. And my boss was like, yo, man, this dude is dope. Let's pick him up real quick. Let's give him 100 grand. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Let's get him some Versace shirts. Let's get him hooked up. Boom, whatever. Let's take him out to a nice dinner. Let's get him to sign this contract. Let's do a, let's do a quick deal. And I looked over the deal quick quickly, and I was like, yo, man, this dude's fuck, fuck about to sign his fucking life away. Like, I mean, back then, it wasn't like now. Now you can make six albums in four years. I know it sounds cool. Three years, you know what I mean? Tupac was writing fucking 100 albums in one year. But I mean, back then, because studio time was so expensive, you didn't mm -hmm. have the resources, whatever. Six albums might take you 10 years, 15 years. You know, you're about to sign your entire life away and not know it. And he was like, fuck that shit, man. I'm about to get on, bro. Yeah, I'm about to get rich. I'm about to boom and just doesn't know any signs of contract. I'm just like, you know. So now. So you saw it. I you saw, saw it behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Now, now me yeah. being an uh, entrepreneur and being an owner, you know, I make everyone's jewelry. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm a Michael Jackson's jewelry. I don't give a fuck, you know, whatever the allegations here and there. I mean, I don't, I'm 50-50. I don't know. Michael Jackson's the baddest motherfucker that yeah. ever did it. Regardless ever. whatever he said, whatever he, whoever he was. There it is. But what he did, he became the baddest motherfucker that ever did it on this planet. For sure, 100%. This, yeah. All right, so that's all. That's, you know. So, so, so and I'm none saying, of us are perfect on this planet. No, not at all. And that's one of the reasons why I idolize you so much. And before you walked in there, what did I tell you? I said, listen, in high school, my senior year, I got a scholarship to play football. And they asked me, said, th name three of your idols. And I said, number one, Bruce Lee, oh, for, forever. Br Bruce Lee, you know what I mean? Bruce Lee is my idol forever. And number two was Bob Marley, just because I just, I fuck with Bob so heavy and everything else. I said, number three was Mike Tyson. And they looked at me like, Mike Tyson, you know what I mean? He's a bad boy. I'm like, yeah, man, but you know what? I've been kicked out of 10 schools. And look, I'm getting a second chance, a third chance, fourth well, chance. I was been kicked out of school too. All my schools yeah. were kicked out. So, you know, I was like, yo, we, of course, Mike Tyson, but... You know, going on, one of my things is that I made jewelry for every single rapper you could think of. I'm still doing shit with, and I'm doing bigger level things, right? It's not just rap, but um, Tom Cruise, you name it. Dr. Phil I made jewelry for, but like, they'll hit me up. These, these young kids, they'll get a $100,000 advance. And they're like, I'm about to go to Ben Ball and get a chain. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, listen, I'm going to be real with you, man. Maybe you should take care of your moms, handle a couple things here and there, and get something cool. Get like a small, cool thing, right? Kill, kill him subtly, you know what I'm saying? Be yeah, subtle. Yeah. And then come back when right, your paper get right. for real and I'll get right with you. That's dope, Let man. me tell you some, some shit now. Let I me love tell you that. some yeah. Let me school you something, <laughs> all right? Listen, what are you talking about? That guy, that chain he thought about all the, for 10 years, whenever he saw somebody, had that, whoever he made a great chain for, he saw that chain and he, he visualized that chain. And now he has the money to do it. Yeah. Don't ever stop him. That's his dream. Yeah. Once you stop him, you're gonna kill his dream. Yeah, yeah, no, mm. I, 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 I agree with you. He's gonna get so much more money. That money's yeah. nothing, nigga. But so, sometimes that some, money's some, nothing. These guys yeah. are gonna get this money, nigga. That yeah. little Trent Van, let them buy the dude, and that shit's gonna make them grow. No, no, no. Listen, what if believe they it or don't, not, Mike? So, 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 no, so, they do. They so, do. So, so, sometimes they, they do, do sometimes they don't. There's a real small percentage of these rappers that don't really blow. They may get their money stolen, but they're gonna make it. That's true too. If they're gonna make it, so many hands in their pockets. But there was a kid, Uzi. Who was already blown up? Lil Uzi's one of the biggest rappers there is out there, yeah. and he was blowing up. Lil Uzi Vert, yeah, Lil Uzi Vert. Yeah, so, so that's my guy, and he just started bubbling, and he's like, "Fuck this, I'm about to get my first chain." And I looked at him, and I checked out his whole style. We sat and talked, and usually anybody else, you go to these Russian Jewish dudes in New York City, like, oh, just take the money. It was like, listen, man, you getting a chain from Ben Baller. That that term wouldn't be so famous. Ben Baller did the chain. It's a fucking number one song in the. In the it was a ASAP, global, yeah, baby. global song. And I said, listen, let's sit down. That chain enhanced his swagger and exactly. changed everything for him. And Money would, couldn't do that. Yeah. Money couldn't do that. And he hit me up. I got the text messages. Money He's like, yo, man, you elevated my career. Boom. And he, he leveled up. We got another chain. We shut down Coachella. You know, like what jeweler <laughs> goes on stage? What jeweler had a TV show? You know what I'm saying? Me. Like what jeweler goes on stage at Coachella in front of 70,000 people? You know what I mean? Holding up a chain. Like, you know, it was, it was a different thing. And, you know, I just... I try to give that experience, but sometimes as a kid who has no idea and is premature, and I kind of just give him a warning. Like, listen, I just want to let you know, are you sure you want to spend this most of your... Okay. I appreciate that. I didn't look sure, at it man. like what I he just said. I hear what Mike's now, saying too. Though. But what he said Absolutely. is real as fuck because yeah. Uzi said, I've been looking at your jewelry since I was 12, and now yeah. I can afford it. And I'm like, okay, cool. And it just worked out that way. Yeah. But now what he said kind of touched me a little bit more. And like, damn, you might have... Because like, fuck, when I went and first got my first Ferrari... 
I walked into Beverly Hills, and the motherfucker's like, yo, are you here to wash a car? And I was like, bro, if you don't get the fuck out of my face before I sock the what the fuck are you talking about, yeah, bro? Fuck I'm here you. to get a 360 challenge Stradali. Not even like no regular shit. I'm about to get some shit. And I took that car and drove it straight to my hood. And I had my boy work at Trader Joe's. I was like, yo, you gotta get in this car and drive this, man. This is possible. Cause I did it. Wow. Do you know? And just yeah. like No, no there's a great point, about. Mike. That's, yeah. that's what it's about. Listen, great man. Great point. I remember one day we went, we came from a club. We came from a club one night with a bunch of girls. We went to so we went in the hotel, we all fucked and drank and did everything. And then we had fucking gorged all night long, right? We woke up in the morning, we all went down to the car shop. We must have bought around 15 cars. Mike. Yeah. Hey, there, Fuck, there, 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 there's a rumor. Can I, I, if you don't mind asking. Go ahead, brother. When you got out, <laughs> when you got out of jail, what, what year was that? 95. 95. Did you get out the dealership and buy like five or ten cars right out the dealership? Yeah. Oh my God, it's true, man. That's crazy. I, was, I know that sounds silly, but for someone like me who came from nothing and love ki- love cars, you know, even in 95. All Rolls Royce. Yeah, yeah. In 95, I had a Lexus and I thought that was doing the biggest thing in the world. And it was a big deal to me. So when I heard that rumor, I was like, this motherfucker got out of jail. Straight out of jail. Didn't go get no, motherfucker got and bought ten cars, whatever it was. Out the straight out the penitentiary, <laughs> and I remember like one of the, one of the big things in my life is, and I'm not saying, and my wife and me we argue about it a lot. Like you know, she's like, you know, apology goes a long way with me. An apology don't really go too far with me. You know, if you did what you did, and I know you're sincere, you ain't even got to tell me it. Like you know, especially I don't want no fake apology. But one thing is, people are too sensitive these days with social media and everything. And I was like, yo, Mike never apologized, and I remember. I was friends with a lot of people growing up that were not tied to you directly, but like one, my boy Jaleel, my boy Jamal, they dad, Mr. Anderson, was, was ra- ran yeah, with you for. That's my man. And Jaleel, to the, you know, they're, they're still my peoples to this day. Rest in peace, Mr. Anderson. And he was like, hey, man, um, we were at Jerry's Deli one night. He was like, yo, Mike is here. You're on a three wheel uh, trike motorcycle thing. And I was like, what the fuck is Mike doing on this three wheel? Mike, right across from a Beverly Center at Jerry's Deli, he's on this three wheel motorcycle. I was like, fuck it. I go out, and Mr. Anderson's like, yo, you want to take I was like, nah, man. I'm going to meet Mike one day and it's going to be at a point where, where, where he remember me. I don't want to, you know, boom. And like um, going back and thinking about it, this dude, my boy Shane Mooney, his dad's Paul Mooney. the famous I'm the Paul Mooney. Oh. Yes, Mooney. So Paul was talking about you when you was in jail on his tape. Uh, side two of his cassette, he said, you don't want to fuck with Mike Tyson. He's like, you know, Mike in jail. They want to apologize. He ain't going to fucking apologize. He was like, you know, he beat up a CO. He's like, listen. You better put me back in my cell and put another lock on that motherfucking extra lock on there. And I was like, man, I love this dude, Mike Tyson, so I fucking I was a much, wild man. dude back then. Yeah, man. No, I, yes. I, you know, I, and I did, I did Floyd Mayweather jewelry. I, I work with a bunch of boxers and stuff, but it's like, it's a different type. And I, I hung out with Floyd a lot. It was, um, and, right. and he's a cool dude. I'm just saying like, Man, you got to do a toad piece for Mike. Oh yeah, toad with the black. On bro, the, it'd be my fucking honor. Oh, Could you do a toad chain for Mike? Yeah, what are you talking about, bro? And I'm booked up. Twenty months right now. I'm twenty months advanced. I'm I'm already booked up, paid, and I fucking I'll push people back. I don't give a fuck. Like that's Mike. this is a whole different level. This is like you know. I'm in presence yeah, you, of real you, great. You're messing me up when you said you knew um, the Andersons, man. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, bro. Let me listen to this. I had an R&B group sign the priority records called The Truth. Okay. And you know you can't have like th- listen. This Anderson family was not a fuck. Like he had a daughter named Keisha, and his daughter was like my personal security guard for. Wow. She would fight dudes. I seen her fight grown ass men. The whole family was just their beasts, crazy. Yeah. So I called Keisha one time, <laughs> and Mr. Anderson has fun. Goes, who is this? And I was like, it's Ben Ball. Who the fuck? What kind of fucking name is Ben Ball? You better fucking call. Listen, and he hung up on me. And I hit up my boy Tony. I was like, hey man, fucking name. Yeah. And I hit up my my partner. I was like, hey bro, like, can you talk to her dad? He's tripping. He goes, no, listen. And I, finally, Keisha comes out and she was like, hey, you can't just call. You got to knock on my door. My dad's old school. Like, boom. And I was like, god damn. But he like hung up on me, cussed me, called me all these kinds of bitches and this and that. And I was like, she's like, don't trip. So one of my boys. Somehow I met early on in my career. Um, he played football. He played for the Rams. His name is Todd Light. And Todd uh, Light. Todd's our boy, too. Yeah, Todd's an old, very old friend of mine, right? Todd's coaching up in, uh, North, in the South, North, Northwest now. North, yeah, Northwest. And um, Todd goes, hey, man, what happened? I goes, I called Keisha, man. Mr. Her dad called, cussed me the fuck out. He goes, oh, he's cussed me out like 15, 20 times. Yeah, like, he's you can't, a trip. <laughs> yeah, you can't call over there like, you know. He's, and he had Team Tyson tattoo. You know, this dude was a... You don't want to, f- this dude was so fucking connected and powerful. He'd go to school and pick up the kids and the dude was like connected to everyone. But anyways, 
you know, I, uh, I had a lot of ties to you uh, indirectly, right? Like, you know, one, two degree separation. And um, there was so much respect that was going on with what you were doing. I just didn't, I, I didn't want to, I felt like I was a peon. Like, I, I just heard the Michael Rappaport uh, podcast. I listened to it like four times. And some of the shit you said on there, I can't even say because, man, my agent and my wife are on some whole other shit right now. Don't talk about your whole past and your criminal past oh, and everything. Man. And like, you know, <laughs> they hate when I do that. But you said a couple things that hit me so hard that I had to pull over in my Lamborghini SUV, pull over and be like, yo, bro, he fucked me up. Like, Mike, like, I've never, heard, first of all, I've never heard you articulate just speak so like on alexander the great and everything and i was like yo man this is a whole different side yeah bro so like immediately when that happened i reached out to everybody i knew at this point so i'm confident in my career right now bro what i've done for asians i just won the lifetime achievement award for asian at the asian american awards in december Congratulations, that was a big brother. thing you know like my mom cried my mom's never been any she's seen me That's go to dope, get arrested man. go to jail fucking get kicked out of schools and my mom was crying like wow man this dude is a this dude my, my son has actually made it and i was like Every single person I know. I don't want to hit Mike Rappaport because that's my boy, but I wasn't strong enough. Finally, I can't believe you didn't hear from Frank. I didn't, dude. man. John Shahidi knew Kiki, and John was like, yo, I was like, yo, bro. John Shahidi's a family member. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I, I, I introduced John to Justin Bieber. Yeah. I put them together. You know what I mean? John, I put, that guy. Yeah, so John goes, listen, I owe you such a favor. Let me hit them up. They're going to Africa or something. I was like, listen, John. I will fucking beat your ass, bro. Please make this happen. I just want to get, I want to, and I want to just meet him. I want to be on this show, you know, boom, whoop, whoop de whoop. And when I got the email back, like it took a, like three weeks, a month later, man, bro, I told my wife and she's like, oh, that's cool. And I was like, cause my wife is 11 years younger than me. She knows who Mike is, but you know, she knows like the, the, like the hangover post tattoo. Yeah. Post tattoo on the face, Mike. And I'm like, you don't know like that. You know, Mike knocking Mitch Green the fuck out the club on the streets. You know what I'm saying? That Mike. You don't Friend know Mike. Dapper Dan. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Dapper Dan. Can you know I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, you, ever, you ever thought about, you ever looked at the history of jewelry, what it represents? I, I, so mm. I have. So so I'm in the middle of finishing a jewelry documentary going That's all the way. deep uh, shit, nigga. Man. Whoa. It's, it's, it's Let's God. Let's talk yeah. about it's, it's that. It's God. Go, going it's, back to the it's history. It's God. It's yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. It's going God. back, but going it's back God. all the way to the Egyptians. Mm. And I had no idea how far back the Egyptians went. I thought the Egyptians came a little, they, they, I'm talking far back, King Tut, everything. And just, we went from there and then all the way to like the 80s when people had the dookie ropes, you know what I'm saying? In Brooklyn, you see, there's this one page, I think it's like, Blanco, Casita, something. This dude, play, all he posts is old school, like Harlem, Brownsville, Bed Stuy. Dudes wearing big ass rope chains, yeah, all yeah, real, yeah, like real that. dudes. So when I got into the history of it, I was like, now I understand the mass appeal of why people, like, I always tell people, listen, man, first of all, good jewelry ain't cheap, cheap jewelry ain't good, mm. you know? And there's a reason why people are wearing jewelry on their neck and certain things, especially in the inner cities, because, you know, it represents some sort of wealth and everything. And, and when I came on, the first thing I thought was like, yo, I want to get a gold chain and a Rolex and a BMW. That was the first thing I did. And I remember when Dr. Dre gave me my first check, it was a big, the best, biggest check I ever had at that moment. He said, hey, listen, um, fuck, I hate saying this in, in a certain way because like, you know, the N-word is thrown around in the hip-hop community so much, you know what I mean? And, and I hate it saying like that because when it's people- It's bigger than you. you, you it, it is. You it can't is. define it. You can't and, be ashamed of it. You can't and, be and he, proud of it. It's bigger than no, you. No, no, for sure. And he was like, he was like, um, he was real deep. And he was like, uh, pull me to the side. And he was like, hey, man, you know, um, we about to do something big over here at Aftermath. You know, he's like, yo, so with this check, what you about to do? And I was like, well, you know, what you mean? He was, he was like, yo, man, don't go out there and, you know, um, like verbatim. He's like, don't go out there and be another nigga. He's like, don't go out there and spend your shit and be a fucking fool. And I was like, I mean, come on, why, how come you ain't talking to everyone else? Because I'm the only Asian. Everyone else is black. He's like, he's like. Cause man, you know, listen, man, you special, you know, you 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 made it this far. You you always the only, you know, you the token Asian dude, and like, just man, don't don't be stupid, right? Don't be an M word. And I was like, I was like, all right, with the ER, and I was like, oh shit, okay, boom. What the fuck you think I did? I bought a BMW and a Rolex the next day. You know what I mean? Of course I did. I had to. I never had nothing. Yeah. You know? He didn't speak to me for like a week. He's like, man, you stupid man. And it was like, <laughs> why? Because he did the same thing. Yeah. I know he did, but yeah. he was trying to like, you know, show. And I had to. Then I remember I lost everything before I turned. I, I was broke twice before I was thirty. Then I made my first million when I was 31, and just from there I never looked back. I had nightmares, like especially with kids now and everything. Yeah. I was like, nah, fuck that. I want them to be okay for a minute. But going back to it, I'll ask people questions, not about the history, and I'll be like, hey, listen, why does that chain mean so much to me? And he's like, 
oh man, and everyone has a different answer, but the most of it is because like, yo man, because I feel like I made it. Do you know what I'm saying? This shit make me feel like, it's like a superpower. It's like Batman putting on his suit. Do you know, it makes them feel, it makes them feel royal. It makes them feel grand. It makes them feel fucking, it, it, it puts their swag. If you see dudes with a lot of chains on, they swagger is different. Do you know, they power. feel, yeah, they have a power. They have a, 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 you know, they feel majestic. Yeah. You know. But the whole, the whole, ob the whole objective is to feel that way without the jury. Mm. 100%. You know, but if the jury make you feel that way, get the jury because you need to feel that way. Yeah. Mm. I mean, people see me so and they think I'm wearing, yeah, you need to feel that way, but you need to feel that way without the jury. Yeah. People think I'm going to wear like 50 chains on a regular basis now because that was me like 10, 15 years ago. But people are like, I'm, I wear a watch, my wedding ring that I made and my earrings, you know, but I keep it real chill, but very classy. And people are like, I'm wearing the, the Allah because it's uh, it's Ramadan. I'm it's representing dope. my people. I just got back from Dubai and I got a lot of uh, Arab folks and Muslim people and like people who I want to show love to. I, I, I'm not necessarily tied to one religion, you know, and like I just believe there is a God and I believe that all religions somehow intertwine with each other. And it's more of a respect thing. So I was like, you know what, man, let me go ahead and I made this diamond Allah piece. Let me let me rock this for the people. And, you know, Muslims don't wear yellow gold. They can't wear, you know, yellow. So it's like I made it in the mm. right color. I was like, let me let me just show love. I to was my about people. to ask him that I was gonna why? say, I was no, listen, I was gonna make the ask him and say, why is it that um platinum is more expensive than gold, but people want to really yellow gold? White gold is more, but they want the yellow gold. Why is that? Because it's it shows off. Mm. Yeah. It's showy, it's yeah. flashy. You know, and then it's um, flashy, it's not, not good. Allowed. No. Yeah. He's right. If you think about it, yellow gold hits, you can see it from so it far sell, away. It sells more than the, the oh, platinum. Oh, way anything. more. Platinum way is more, more expensive. It sells more than anything, the yellow gold. Way more. And you know... Um, How'd you get into diamonds, man? So... From music to diamonds? So this is crazy. So I, um, I left the music business... And while I was in the music business, my uncle, he uh, he learned to trade as a jeweler, as a bench jeweler, meaning like he's actually physically doing a lot of goldsmith work and everything. And his son and me were the only ones that were kind of cool. He was the only person that smoked weed with me. And he's uh, three years younger than me. So he hit me up. He's like, hey, man, introduce me to some people like Bone Thugs and like Dr. Draney, but I can make jewelry. You know, let's get this going. I was like, all right. He made a piece and it wasn't that great. <laughs> And I was like, fuck, man, come on, dog. Like, we fucking with big dogs. Like, we working with big dogs, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So around 2004, I was getting, I was engaged. And um, fuck, I never, I never talked about this ever. I've, I, I've done every interview you can think of. Breakfast Club, Late Night, Late Show. I'm never broke, to, never talked about this. But I've said that I was engaged. But so I got caught cheating on, on my ex fiance and she was a supermodel and she was in Milan doing a show. And she was like, Hey, how come you don't want to come? Boop, boom. I was feeling myself. You know, I, was, I just sold my sneaker collection for $3 million. You know, I had paper. Boom. I, I was like, I was ready. To, I, 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 not music. I'm just, I, I don't have to wake up in the morning. And, uh, I was doing this video shoot. I was a co-star of little John's video shoot with ice cube. And, um, She's like, you're going to stay for a video shoot? I'm like, babe, I'm not trying to sit around and like be your like, lack. you know what I'm saying? Because like, you know, it was like, I went to a lot of her shows, whatever. So she's in, she's in Italy. And um, she would call me every night. Back then, the cell phones wasn't kind of the same. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. call up from a house phone. And she'd hit me every time at the, the same time. And I, di I didn't pick up the phone. It was like midnight. And um, she called my cell phone. I didn't pick up the phone. And she, I was in Vegas fucking around, acting up. You know what I mean? Just being a scumbag, piece of shit. And she found, she didn't find out. She just That's called being human. Yeah. Her, her her energy was so on point. I never spoke about this before. She knew mm. shit was off. So at that point, it was doomed. So I went through a real miserable time when we had broke up. She called off the engagement. I was embarrassed to my family. You know, she, they don't know why. To the, well, unless they listen, my mom listens to this shit. She's a 75 year old Korean woman. She ain't listening to this shit. Like, she can barely handle an iPhone. But <laughs> she, um, you know, my wife might hear this and be like, man, you didn't tell me that shit. But like, you know, I, I fucked up. So I was in a, a transition in my life. What am I going to do now? I can't sit, like, am I going to invest it? What am I, like, I need to figure out what to do next. Mm. So I said, fuck, man, I traveled the world. I went to like 25 different countries. That was where I traveled the most. And I said, um, I'm going to hit my cousin Steve up, see what the fuck he's doing. So I go down to Slauson, you know, right by Nipsey's store. And I go to the infant Slauson and my cousin's there. And he's like, yo, I'm doing well. He had a Corvette and, you know, whatever. I, and I was like, okay, so how does this really work? And he's like, you know, boom, here and there. And a lot of things with Koreans... This is, is the jewelry guy. Yes. Yes. A lot of things with Korean people, they don't believe in contracts. They believe in a handshake, mm. and that shit's good. And that's just how it, how it goes, you know? 
And my uncle pulls up and he's like, hey, so what are you doing here? You know, how's your mom, blah, blah. And our family's in turmoil. All our family don't speak to each other because of money and stupid shit. You know, what I, mean? I mean, it's not stupid, but money fucks up families. You know what I mean? One person immigrated here, brings the rest, and then like people are doing well, and then like one borrows money from someone else, they don't pay back. So bottom line is my uncle and my mom are kind of having a funk. And I remember my, he would trade with my mom and give her jewelry. My, lo- my mom loved jewelry. That's why I got my first infatuation with jewelry, seeing my mom rock it. My mom was a hustler. So going on, um, I met my cousin. and, and I mean, I, I went up with my cousin. He was like, yo, you want to fuck around with it and check it out? He goes, there's some good money in it. Mm. He says, you have a lot of music clients. You have a lot of celebrities already. Mm. You know, I told you before. He goes, I was like, okay, but if I come in it, I want to buy in one third. Me, your dad, you know, you, 33, 33. And I don't want to be in this. Even if we move next door into the next booth, I just want to do that so we fresh start all together. Mm-hmm. I don't want this like, oh, no, we're going to go everything cool and we'll split 50, 50. No, nah, because there's no contract, there's no nothing, there's no corporation. I don't want to have the drama. I'd rather be your friend than lose you out, you know what I'm saying, than, than you know, fuck up business. Yeah. So we started that. That's why I became a jeweler. And I hit up everyone I know. I said, hey, listen, I'm making jewelry now. Now, I had... It took about two years to get perfect perfect with it, but my uncle was cold with it, super cold with the jewelry, with the hand skills and the carving, designing. And I was already a pretty detailed, intricate person and everything. So my boy at the time was uh, was dating where I carry, and they're together for like four years. And I was like, hey, listen, bro, you, you got to give me a chance, man. Let me make where I carry a chain. And he's like, oh, man, you know, she deals with Jacob. You know, she deals with Cartier, she deals with this. I was like, yeah, you know, I, I know, motherfucker. But if I make something proper, like the real shit, and I was talking big shit, I was like, yo, I can make her a dope ass MC. Does she have a logo? Send me the logo. Sends me the logo. I make the chain. Sure enough, Mariah Carey, my first celebrity client, give it to her. Um, you know, well, she bought it and wow. then she wore it in, in her Bone Thugs collab video, whatever. And then um, right after that, I started working with the clips, Pusha T and, and Malice, you know what I mean? And they're from Virginia, hardcore, hardcore hip hop dudes, made their chain. That was a big deal. Then from there, Jacob got arrested. Mm. he was embezzling money for BMF you know what I'm saying so we went to jail basically all these people from like Scott Source Diddy like uh, Nas the game everyone started migrating from Jacob to me so a lot of pressure mm. I was like yo we gotta get this popping then everyone was like, want me to be in their music videos and this and that and I said listen I need to not only make the best jewelry but if my prices are fair no one's gonna wanna go with me that's outside of hip hop I need to be bigger than this shit. I need to be, I need to be making the motherfucking, the, the king of pop, all these people. I had all these people I wanted to make jewelry for. And I said, listen, I'll get to them. I had basically created, this was my space at the time. I had created this image and everything else. And I was like, you know, I don't want to beat your prices. I want to beat your work. Because in 1986, my mom wanted to buy a Rolex. And my mom did, we lived in a fucking two bedroom apartment. You know what I mean? Like 2,000 square feet, which is big, but that was like us doing it, you know, and my, my my brother and sister are going to school, you know, over over you know on scholarship in high school, and she would go to Rodeo Drive on a Monday and like random days to go look at this watch. And the store in Rodeo Drive was called Fred, and Mike was there buying something, and he was buying like millions of dollars. And this is eighty six, you know, what I'm saying million dollars then is like fucking ten million dollars now. And I was like, Mom, she's like, don't you think the watch is beautiful? I was like, Man, Mom, uh, I'm not even thinking about the watch right now. It's Mike Tyson. She's like, Oh yeah, Mike Tyson. Is, he's a he's an awesome guy. I was like, Mom, that's you don't even know, man. Whatever he's getting, I want whatever you're getting. I don't even know. It was like some crazy shit. But we were outside the store. You were inside the store at Fred on Rodeo Drive. Yeah, Fred. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it was like I, I've had a history with jewelry, and now that I've gotten to to this level of where I'm at now. I just got tired of it because there's so many Instagram jewelers that are fucking bullshit. They have no office front. They faking it. They've taken pictures of people of my pieces, someone else's pieces, and be like, "Yo, I can make this. You want to buy it?" Boom. I'm like, "Yo, man, don't do that cornball shit." You know what I'm saying? I know you're trying to get on. You hungry? You thirsty? Like, but don't take my shit. Like, or shout me out or something. Like, you know, I, I didn't do that fucking. I didn't do that bullshit when I was trying to get on. You know what I mean? I made the shit myself. I made it happen myself. I used my own resources. So like, you got a million jewelers out there who who just biting and stealing and, and they on some punk shit mm. and they ain't been approached before and a couple of them be like, yo man, I don't think you know where I'm from, bro. You know what I mean? You get fucked up for stupid shit like this and then they go call an attorney and I get a fucking lawsuit hit me with. So it's like, it's a, it's a catch-22 but where it is now is I said, I'm not gonna do this shit anymore. Then my cousin's like, no, no, what the fuck are you talking about? We're, you know, we're, we're huge. What are you talking about? I was like, man, I ain't doing this shit. So to, to stop that, I said, listen, Make a little small part on the website and say, if you want to get a custom Ben Baller chain, you need to pay $100,000 up front. And then from there, you'll have access to a cell phone. You can hit him up. You go through the design process, boom. 
he'll post a shit on your, you know, my Instagram because I'm the highest follower jeweler on Instagram and I've been for a while and like, boom, and we'll go through this process. I did that shit, man, and fucking 12 orders came in. And I was like, fuck, man, I don't want to work. And now I just put myself into a year. I, I just signed a year contract. So what I did was the first time I returned everyone's money. And then a lot of them went to a different, different people. And they're like, fuck this dude, Ben Ball is on some other shit. And I was like, no, I got to step because I've always stepped away. And when you look in the rearview mirror, if you keep seeing people kind of close or kind of what, I don't want to see nobody in my rearview mirror, you know? So I was like, fuck this. So I just raised the price. And I was like, listen, man. If someone got something dope that's pushing the bar, like if you just want to make a Mercedes Benz chain with diamonds, come on, man. Mm. You know, like, dog, you know, you wasting my time. Like, I want to do some innovative shit. You know what I mean? Like, like the a toad. Like, yeah, toad, whatever the fuck it is. It could be, you know, anything. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm at that level now where, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm good. I have my own jewelry line, you know. I'm, yeah, I'm sure. I was about to tell you, it's good to have people in your rear mirror. You That's to remind them why they're back there. That shit kind of scare me though, man. I feel like no, that's to remind them why they're back there. Yeah, that's why I just don't like it too mirror. close. I'm like, fuck, I gotta keep running. I gotta keep. I gotta, I gotta keep driving. I gotta keep pushing. You know, like um, I'm gonna take that into consideration though. Yeah, because there's some people on my bumper right now. I need that's to. That's where they belong on your bumper. Yeah, <laughs> they're not going anywhere else. If you don't see them, they can't motivate you. No, nah, true. You know, man. when you see them, oh, I gotta get a little. Hell. Oh, they're getting close, yeah. but that's the closest they're gonna get. Mm. No, nah, that's shit. That's. Oh, thank you, man. That, that's some good advice there. Yeah. Wow. I had a question. Yeah. What's the most expensive piece Ooh, yeah, yeah. you've ever made? Uh, I made a ten million dollar ring for a Saudi uh, for a Sultan. Wow. And um, it was crazy because ten mil in one ring. <laughs> ten mil in one ring, and I could never post it. I could never show. In fact, yeah. until then, I don't even know. Actually, no, I, I, I'm sure I can say that. But yeah, uh, it was for a sultan. And um, it was crazy because I flew private jets to Vegas, to like New York. This was the only time I ever flew private overseas and it was the worst experience of my entire life. Now, I, listen, man, I get if you become super famous. Like, I can't walk to the mall without getting stopped. I can't go to the airport. I get stopped 20 times every day. Someone takes a picture. Cool. But I know when you're like Chris Brown or someone, or even him, right. it's tough to fly commercial. I get it. You know what I mean? I love flying commercial. I love flying commercial too. I love I love the people you interact with. Yeah, the people. yeah. I hate sure. being sometimes on the, um, my kids say, are we going to go on a plane when it's only us this time? And I hate that. But I said, no, we're going to go with the people. We got to love the people. We're I part love of that, people. Mike. But imagine going to the Middle East. <laughs> I love that, bro. Imagine flying to the Middle East and you know you fly on a, on a jet and, Oh, Even yeah. The, Fuck that. It's the, bitch. It's, the, it's, it's the worst experience. Yeah. And on top of that, I had to stop and refuel. And like, it was just fucked up. Then I get out there, man. It just happened to be a really bad time. It was hot and everything else. I was like, yo, man, boom. And then I just <laughs> thought about it. I was like, yo, man, the wire just hit. And I thought about it. I was like, wow, man, that's some crazy ass shit. And like, it was like one week out of every year that he would cop jewelry from me. Wow. You know, and like, now his daughters cop jewelry from me and everything. But like, um, that was the most expensive piece. And you were like, okay, the bad flight, that might have been worth it. No, it was, but I, I don't like flying, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I Me got either. zip-tied on um, on the way to uh, to South Africa. I was going to I was going to Cape Town, Johannesburg. I got zip-tied after, like, 13 hours because I was doing push-ups in the first class. And I was like, hey, man, I've watched every episode of Fresh Prince on the plane. I was like, yo, yeah, I'm starting to get I'm crazy. Done. So I'm I started done. taking some oxygen. And then the stewardess was like, hey, you know, um, we have to save this money, this much oxygen for the rest of the camp. I was like, listen, I'll give you $60,000 for this camera. Just do me a favor. Don't ever talk to me ever again and let me have this oxygen thing. And then right then they zip tied me and put me in the shit. And I was like, all right, so how the fuck am I going to get back to America, back home? I'm in South Africa, right? And I was like, all right, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to live here. And I was thinking, okay, I can fly to here, then fly to Egypt, then from Egypt to Greece, then Greece to London. Then a I was thinking, short flights. Yeah, so I was tripping. I discovered Ambien. Uh, took Ambien, flew back. But yeah, I don't really like flying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was like another thing. But of course... I'm with you, bro. You know, Yeah, th yeah. that was that was the most expensive piece. Fuck, <laughs> Listen, man. man. Shit. I remember those long flights to the trip. You've had to do a lot of those. Yeah, I just got back from Dubai, man. You've been to Dubai before. Plenty of time. You go on these long trips. Next, next thing you know, you're on these long trips. You're talking to somebody you don't know. And the next thing you know, you're in the private car with... Them. It's a fucking trip, dog. Yeah. It's a trip. Life is a trip. Human beings interacting with each other and they don't even know each other. Strangers, that's a trip. Let, let me ask you a question, man. What? When did you start smoking weed? 
Listen, I'm going to tell you a story about this. This is interesting. I smoked weed all my life. Probably started at eight or something. My mother used to... Friends eight? Used to, my mother's <laughs> friends used to give me weed. They make me go to sleep. <laughs> they make me go to sleep. Weed and liquor. The men make me go to sleep. And so I just been doing it all my life. And then around 15... I stopped because I wanted to be a buck. No, around 18 or something. I stopped because I wanted to really fight. I started fighting, and I lost an Olympic trial, and I started getting paranoid. I must have lost because I'm smoking too much weed. Right? So I started fighting, and I stopped. I thought I stopped smoking in 1984. From 1984 to around 19, 1990, what? I can't start smoking in 98. Shit, 90, yes, 14 90, years? 90, I went to Tupac down 96, 90, 96, 97, because that's what I smoked last time, the first time I smoked since, the, um, that must have been 14 years, Tupac died, I went over his house, and I started smoking again. Wow. Oh, and I never shit. stopped. Wow. So you took 14 years off. Yeah, and I never stopped. So, and one day I smoked during a fight. You know, and it was the best fight I ever had. I broke his nose, yeah. his cheekbone, I saw his back, his rib. It was incredible feeling, smooth and everything. Yo, man. I said, I should have been doing this all along. I started tripping out when I found out that a lot of NBA players are smoking, like before the game and everything. I was oh, like, yeah. How the fuck? Because when I get real high, I can't get shit. Like, I'm like, bro, I need to get a driver, boom, here. But, you know, I learned to obviously manage how to become a productive this stoner. This is the thing, right? I played in some NFL games. Weed, great. Um, great. Wow. all kinds great. of drugs. Are meant to be used and not abused. Yeah, you have to know how to use them. Some of, most of us abuse the drugs. Yeah, you know, you just smoke a smoke a nice drink, nice blunt, boom. Let's go in the ring now. And it feels good. Let's get locked. You know, but yeah, sometimes you that. smoke so much, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you sleep. when you smoke one drink, all right, I'm ready to go. Yeah, no, that's my so, favorite thing, dude. Oh, smoking and then going to the gym. Yeah, you know, oh, I I just it's the best. Depending on you know what I'm doing, and <laughs> it's I'm sorry the best, right? to it's go the best. back. I, I, I gotta, if you don't mind me asking, man, go I just for it. go for it. Who, who's who's the who's the 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 biggest celebrity or the craziest celebrity you smoked you smoke with? Fuck, I don't know. Shit, Evan Britton. Yeah, Evan. Name <laughs> and name. I don't know shit. We had Snoop in here. I smoke with yeah. Snoop. Ben, you got to watch the show. Have you watched Hot I, Boxing? I, I watched a uh, Piers Morgan uh, episode. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, funny nice. because at a certain point, he smoked for the first time here. Yeah. yeah. For the first for the for a point, I don't know what it was. And y'all were talking and everything and it break down. I thought Mike was going to punch him. Man. I didn't know. I was like, I was like, yo, is he offending you or something? I was weird. I just couldn't read it, you know what I mean? So no, those, a, those days those days are gone. No Mike don't hit any people no more. No more. No, nah, man. I just I just Mike's all love these days. No, bro. I know, I know. You know, uh, my wife has uh, been vegetarian for 16, 17 years. And when I had stomach surgery f uh, almost five years ago, five years ago, I had stomach surgery and I don't know what the fuck happened. They were just like, just eat light, whatever, blah, blah. And then I kind of went vegetarian for 11 mm. months. I went pescatarian. I had no more stomach issues. Mm. And then I started introducing other things. But then I realized, you know, I know I heard you're on a vegan lifestyle now, right? Oh, yeah. Listen, we die by it because of what we eat. That's how come we die. Hey man, this is, listen, bro. Again, this this is this is fucking amazing because it's awesome, um, bro. First of all, like yeah, just connecting with you, connecting with just other people here, and uh, I've talked to Cody a lot on 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 DM and everything else, and just again with Mike. Like I'm such a big fucking boxing fan. Like you know, back in the day, there was you were way before your time, but there was select TV. You know what I mean? Or on TV, it was like that was the only shit you could watch. Crazy. I watched Tommy Hearns versus Sugar Ray, and that watched was a good one. Yeah, yeah. That was, and I'm watching. Woo, that was you know, big time. Yeah. And I'm talking about like I never seen anybody do this type of shit and then hit with the other one. And yeah. I'm like, come on, man. And I always thought like, yo, I'm gonna be a bad motherfucking boxer. I was like, that was never my thing. <laughs> you know, I that was okay when Taekwondo, but like, you know, um, the best Asian boxers are the Japanese. They're the fucking best. Mm. Oh, they're good. Yeah, yeah, they're the fucking best. Probably yeah, they can compete. The the best Asian fight I ever saw like the Taiwans and the yeah Japanese. Interesting. The when they could fight, they're the fucking best. They got yeah. long range, like twenty title defenses and shit like that. You know, when no, they're good, they got the they're fucking. Good. I got I got another thing that ties to you. It's funny. Yeah. So Lou Adler owns the Roxy. On top of the Roxy was a legendary place that Jack Nicholson, the Lakers, Heidi Fleiss had her thing there. It's called On the Rocks. It's a very legendary place. So we closed it down for the McNe Peter McNeely. Is that what his name is? Yeah, Peter McNeely. That's a trip yeah. fight. Right? So his fight <laughs> coming back, right? And he goes, "Hey, we're shutting the entire club down." I was like, "For what?" He goes. Michael Jordan is coming up to watch this with Damon Wayans, and it was Lou Adler, Mike, uh, Michael, J Michael Jordan, Damon Wayans, 
me and Nick Adler and the bartender that was there. And that was it. And that shit was crazy because it ended so fucking fast. And he was trying to fucking kill him. You know what I mean? And that was a big thing. All your fights were a big deal. Do you know what I mean? And like, even like when I was in high school, so funny. I remember, um, I was in high school. Yeah, I was in high school. And when you were in Tokyo, that situation happened. I didn't want to bring him in, and I thought Go about for it. it. Man, that's life, man. You can't be embarrassed to man, talk just, about just, bad this things. This is the crazy that, part was. That's not I even was a bad a, thing. That was, was just something that happened I was such a life. big fan that I, 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 didn't look at it as a, I didn't look at it as a bad thing for you. I took it to heart. Like, it affected me. Like, I was so upset for the rest of the night. We're headed to a house party. I had a bag of, like, munchies. I had weed. I had alcohol. I was ready to go get fucked, probably get some pussy. I was, uh, I was lit. And then that happened. And I was like, man, fuck my whole night up. Because I was like, yo, I was so heartbroken. Because I was like, yo. And I was like, man, fuck that. So it was like, that's how deep of it, of an impact you have to where I was like, yo, man, like, I fuck with you that heavy. And um, again, man, yeah, if I didn't take my losses, you're right. If I didn't take my yeah, L's and everything. You have to take those losses because you never get those losses again. Not that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? You learn from my losses. Yeah. You how did you to, feel the before more that you, fight, Mike? Before that fight? Yeah. How were you feeling? Just an arrogant motherfucker. Mm. <laughs> arrogant, oh, he's gonna die. I'm gonna kill this motherfucker. Really? Yeah. What? Wait, so what? What time was the fight at? It was like, it was 9 p.m. So that means it was. Like I, I listen. I didn't train. I could have trained better, but it, you know my mind wasn't there. I don't care how hard I trained. Yeah. My mind wasn't really there. I was fucking all the ladies. These guys, listen. This is what my promoter does, right? Mm. Since I'm I'm up in my room and I'm known to fuck all the fucking cleaning ladies. I'm normally in the fuck I fuck all the cleaning ladies. So um they get all the cleaning ladies off. They get listen, they get all the cleaning ladies off my floor and they put a bunch of old fucking Japanese bitches on my floor, right? So I fucked them too, right? <laughs> so I fucked these old Japanese. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, You're a fucking right. savage, bro. Yeah, no, just, back then, this fucking... Mo it's a fucking animal. Would how, you how say... You? 23. Wow, Damn, bro. 23. Would you say before that fight, you kind of just didn't give a fuck? You didn't give a fuck about it, really? Yeah, but listen, I mean, it's going to be... It's been a couple of fights. Big fights, I didn't give a fucking knock these motherfuckers. Uh. And a lot of these guys was just so intimidated. They pressed the pressure to hold... Event was just overwhelming, and I would fuck with them and talk to them and bad to them and the yeah, family, yeah. scare them, get in their head, yeah. and stuff. But you know what was dope? This is what was cool. Buster Douglas just end up fucking flop. Dude ended up being like five hundred pounds. You know, like fell off. I'm not saying that's good for him, but what I'm saying is that was a fluke win by him. You right. know what I'm saying? He caught Mike on an off night. It wasn't like on some like that was. That's how I looked at it. Like, Listen, right. would you look like this? That's some. That's that's something like you said. He went to hell. That's that's a big responsibility. It kills people. Yeah, it drives them insane. Drove me insane. Having the heavyweight championship, and you mm. just imagine it. What am I saying now? How? What am I? No, I know this. There's nobody on this fucking planet that can kick my ass. You want to hear that? You just imagine the shit you could say because mm. you're that individual. Yeah, you that do. Yeah, you could say that because you're in that position to say that. So you just think of shit. How long did you stay I mean, in Japan water. after that? I left right away. That the next night. Oh fuck. Okay. Um, How'd you feel after that? Huh? How'd you feel I after? I felt relieved a little oh. bit. Damn! Wow. I wow. felt relieved. A lot of pressure, relief, and shit. Wow. I couldn't wait to go to my go to my girlfriend's house, pick up my car, and just go out and just let them heal me up because I had a big eye, so I let them just hang out. I hung up for a while till my eye went down. It was still black, but my eye was. You got down. some pussy after the fight. Yeah, I was just an animal. Oh, I didn't. Shit. I didn't understand. That was my life. That's what I thought life was about. Okay. I was. A, I was a walking hormone. You know, I'm. I'm, 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 I'm hormone, this is bro. terrible. I know this is so bad. My yeah. wife is gonna be like, "Why the fuck did you say that?" And she doesn't even know because she didn't listen to the Mike Rapport, Mike Tyson podcast. When you said you're like, "Damn, fuck, man, I'm. I must have AIDS or something." Blah blah yeah. whatever, bro. I went to the doctor so much <laughs> that the doc, cause I was, I was I, for an Asian dude, like you know, awesome. I was the only Asian in college. You know what I mean? I was, I was playing football and basketball, and like you know, like I, had, I had swagger. You know, I was running with Dre. You know, I thought I was the shit, right? So I would get, I would get, you know, I would get, I would get pussy on a, off on a, on a regular basis, and like I didn't think about it for a long time. Shit, too. Back then, it was like common to kind of raw dog. I ain't gonna kind of ah, fuck it. Who cares? And I remember I said, like, yo, I didn't feel good for like three months. I was like, yo, man, I got HIV, bro. I'm fucking, I'm sick. I go to the doctor. He's like, yo, you don't have that. And I was like, all right, let me get tested. So finally, this I'll never forget, Dr. Gold in Century City. He's like, you have nothing. And they didn't let me come to the office no more. They're like, you're crazy. 
And I was like, what if you get your dick sucked? And you know, and you don't yeah. know the person at home. <laughs> and I was asking crazy questions. <laughs> <laughs> and like just crazy shit and i was like yo and then when i found out like i was good good like i was just like yo man and like um it you know i'm just saying you know what i mean like it's just that it just i thought about what you said no, and it listen fucked me up. shout I'm, out dr gold i'm I, I'm, out, I'm in jamaica I'm, I'm i got a strip i'm fucking the strip i have a rubber we're having foam the rubber bust boom <laughs> and listen when it busts, right? Yeah. I'm like, fuck it, bust. And the girl looked and she starts crying. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, why is she crying? Is she crying because she think I'm giving her some disease or she's crying because she had the disease and she gave it to me? <laughs> I'm just fucked up. Why is this bitch crying because the rubber bust? Oh, oh shit. shit. How, how, was that a long time ago? Was yeah, it? long time ago. I was, I was, yeah, I was in my 30s, long, right before Lance Lewis fight. Yeah, I was like, fuck, I'm gonna die. Oh, no. Oh fuck, man, dude! So that's so crazy. I mean, this this wow, man. That's dude. Tell us about this, bro. Tell oh, us what about we your cannabis with. company. Yeah, man. well, let's taste your These stuff. Anything dope we as can hell, taste? You got man. any flour yeah, we can yeah. taste? Uh, I didn't bring any flour because oh. it's it's more it's of a vapes. luxury brown and like kind of like if you got people who got kids who don't want to smell like weed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like beautiful, that. So, yeah, so man. it's like um, really nice packaging. Yeah. VVS. Well, VVS is me. Okay, so I'm a jeweler, right? Yes. VVS is the oh, highest that's a quality. It's the highest quality diamond. And all my pens, they like look that. like jewelry. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they look really, really classy, you know, super high end, you know? And so I brought nice, some I brought bro. some dope things. Yeah, I brought Thanks, some shit. Brother. Yeah, brother. You think gifts. that's that's really what people want to be? They want to not even feel high end, they want to look high end, huh? More than anything. They do, huh? they do. You know, especially that that upper echelon type of people. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's it's a like nice jewelry. little and it's, thing. And, it, bro. and it's let me take off the top. So this is a C cell. This is the, this is like the the BMW Mercedes yes. Benz of quality of pens. So what did that start inhaling? Just hit it. That's mango mint. Yeah, hit that bitch. Ooh, that's a big hit, bro. Ooh, that was a nice. Big hit. Yeah. That was. I'm gonna try this orange sorbet. Right orange here, sorbet's bro. dope. And let me tell you something. <laughs> this has <laughs> this has, <laughs> this has more <coughs> this has more THC content than. <laughs> It's, it's a little, obviously they have to that's make it that child way. Protection. You have to though, because if you, if you don't, which one is that? Orange sorbet. Orange so that's sorbet. my new, that's my new favorite flavor actually. Orange sorbet. Yeah, that's my new favorite. What shit made right you decide to get What's into the, the cannabis business? So this is the thing, man, and and you know some people know, some people don't. You know, I used to sell weed illegally. You know what I'm saying? I used to, I used to, I used to transport dope to Atlanta, to fucking um to Ohio, mostly Ohio, and uh, you know, hit that and try that out. So. I've been smoking weed almost all my life. I stopped for a while too. I had a, I had an eight year break, um, and we won't get into that because it was a bad situation. Of why I fucking, I um, I'll fuck. We'll get into it. One night I was smoking out of the bong and I decided to snow cap it. With so some, nice, bro. Yeah, super hit clean. Really nice. So I did cocoa puffs, I and I'm hitting puff. it. I used to be a cocoa puffer. Yeah. So then my chest started going real. My heart rate's going really fast. And my boys with me, and I was like, "Hey, bro, do me a favor, man. Can you take my heart rate?" And I, it wasn't like some Friday shit. I knew my shit was fucked up. And my boy is a good friend, dude. He goes, no, nah, man, your shit's cool, bro. You're tripping. You know, you're good. And I was like, all right. And I knew it wasn't good. So I went, I put my head in the fridge, the freezer, and I sat in there for a minute. And I just couldn't focus. I called 911. Wow. And my heart rate was going 300 beats per minute. Whoa. Yeah, so what's this motherfucking friend of yours is talking about? He was doing that so I wouldn't, so I could calm down. You know what I mean? He was trying to calm me down. So anyways... Every time I smoked weed after that, it triggered that feeling. Mm. So I was like, man, fuck this shit. But then I yeah. got back into it. Going on, I, uh, I'm a businessman, you know? And I've been in this business for a long time. I know what it is. And for it to be legal, I wanted somehow to get into it. So I saw my buddy who was like, they weren't the protégés of mine, but they kind of looked up to me growing up. But they, these guys are dudes now who I idolize, you know what I mean? Like these are younger guys than me who are killing it, crushing it. And they've built a conglomerate in the cannabis business and no one even knows. They've been so good about being low key about it, but um, they hit me with this vape pen, and I was like, "The fuck is this shit?" They're like, "You travel a lot." I was like, "Yeah, I go to Asia and here and there." He goes, "You can't bring flour with you to Asia, you know? You can't." I was like, "No, you're right." When Snoop went to Korea, I got him every single bit of Kush you could get in the entire country, wow. and he was like, he called me. Snoop was like, "You my motherfucking dog." Boom. If you get caught with weed out there, bro, oh, you're it's, dead, right? It, oh yeah, dog. You gotta remember, Snoop Some is places, six of, they kill you for yeah, it. But yeah. in Korea, there's no jail cells over four feet tall. Can't stand up in your cell. You fuck, you got a bucket. Like, Whoa. And anyways, you know, 
I broke it down to him. But anyways, going on, I was like, yo, I want something discreet. I want to build something that looks like jewelry, looks expensive, looks luxurious. This ain't for the dude who's saving up, oh, I got $20, let me go get a joint, or let me get some weed. Nah, that's not the client I'm going after. I'm going after, you know what I'm saying, the, the Elon Musk type of people, or you know, someone who's balling out of control that don't want to, you know. A lot of celebrities that soak smoke my pens, they like it because it looks like makeup, or it looks like the girls. They don't want to look like, boom. So, you know, when I made these pens, I want it to be high quality, the best possible extraction, the best oils, you know, the best mechanics, everything. So... You know, I even gave you this. I what, is the, what is our pens looking like, man? <laughs> How's our pens looking? Our pens? Yeah, was that the cut we're from doing, cigars or something? We're doing some stuff with PAX, I think. PAX is cool. Yeah, PAX I, is I got, cool. I, got no, I, got, I was going to do something with PAX. I just, um, and then they got, but it was not like, I don't, know, I don't want to say, I'm not going to say anything bad. It's not necessarily bad. It's just, I what didn't. your opinion, man. Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just so felt good. like uh, I'd be promoting packs more than I'd be promoting my own brand. Yeah. Because you have to use their mechanism. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Absolutely. So going on, this is Gorilla Glue. And uh, I love Gorilla Glue. I've and tried doing that before. That's good. So this is it's my my Bentley key. Yeah. So you do that. And this is like oh, super. Dope, I take this bro. to, by the way, Mike, just so you know, if you go to a Laker game or go to a Dodger game, or go to Knicks, whatever you go to. If one, if you have one or two pens in your pocket, don't take them out of your pocket. Go through this metal detector. These will bypass them. I had just enough metal to put in here to, and it has a built-in USB charger. Those are Gummies? crazy. Gummies, yeah, diamonds, wow. shaped of a diamond. That one? Those are ten milligrams each. Mike. Yeah, they're chill. THC. But they make you feel good. Oh man. <laughs> I want to. I want to feel good, brother. So this, the, I brought you this key. So it looks like a Bentley key, right? And you just go boom. And then you just hit the button and you hit it. Just hit this. That's dope, dude. And it smoke comes out. Boom. It's powerful. It's got my Ben Bala logo on there. You know? Brought you that right there. That's dope, man. When you going to be able to do some shit where a guy could, you know, like the, like the French you do, why you get somebody have it in the ring and get high and start smoke? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, um, crystallized got, THC? Yeah. yeah. We, got, we got a lot of different stuff going on, though, man. We got, um, um, these are nice. I, too. I have a syrup. I didn't know how how deep into this you were, so I was gonna give you the syrup that I have. Right, you put it with Sprite. It's fucking delicious, right? What do you do about stick up kids and all that kind of stuff? You ever had anybody try to extort you or anything? I had somebody try to extort yeah, me one forgot, time, man. I forgot to talk about that shit. I had a dude, but you know, I, I, you know, I'm like, from the nigga world. You know, yeah, how we yeah. Get come down. on, man, bro. You know, I grew you know up. In, I grew up down. in gangs all my yeah, life. You know, I mean, what I'm you know how bro. we get down. So yeah. I forgot to bring that out. You so doing, you know you doing um, good, nigga. What you fuck you hanging around us for? Yeah, I had some dudes hit me up, and and then it was crazy fuck. because I ran with black people almost all my life on that side. So the Asian gangsters from my hood, they didn't really appreciate that, which I understand. I understand, you know, why they're like, "Hey, man, you know, you run with them, boom, whatever." So I had hate coming from both sides when I made it. Like, oh, you don't come back to K Town no more. You know what I'm saying? You fucking running with this, this, and this, but you don't come back. And I was like, you know. And the funny thing it was it was worse on the Asian side on, on the Korean side than it was on the on the black side. But I remember um I told this dude, uh, nah man, you know, fuck you. Like, I mean, I you know, I'm I'm down to give you a good deal. I'm down to take care of you, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not breaking you off no paper. What the fuck I need to break for what? I got bro, I'm a grown man, I got kids, I got my own responsibilities. The fuck you talking about? He goes, Okay, okay, I'm gonna see you. And I remember I pulled up on this corner of Robertson and Beverly, like right a block away from the Ivy restaurant. Who is that? And I'm in my Ferrari, and I'm sitting at a light. I'm saying that you boiling the area. He's saying boiling area codes hey. and shit. And I'm at the, <laughs> I'm at the lights. Four thirty in the afternoon, and I look to the side of the window. Dude pulling a gun on me. Bro. Young cat. He had a hood on, and he had a gun right at the window. And I'll tell you exactly how I was. Whoa, I bro. I was chilling right here, looking for the light, looking at the light. I was looking over here, looked over here, looked over there. I see the gun at me. I said, man, I wasn't scared at all whatsoever. I said, man, this motherfucker, man. I wish I wasn't in this car right now because I, I, I just got this brand new for I was I was like, I don't want to fuck this car. And I thought about it. And I looked over again. And then I saw the gun and the barrel of the gun was all fucked up, like beat up. And that's when I got, I got scared. I was like, fuck, man. It's that time finally. It's finally my time. I done talked all this shit. I done did this. I done flourished. I done did. I, I lived. This is my time. I'm gone. He going to kill me. Do you know what I'm saying? So... I remember the dude uh, Dude was like, roll the window down, motherfucker. Roll the window down. And I looked at the dude, right? And he was like, oh, shit, man. He was like, yeah, yeah, you are Ben Baller. And he's like, hey, man, give me your watch. And I was like, 
not this watch, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to whatever. Boom. And, and, then, and then we had got into it, and there was, it was too much discussion. So he, he was he was starting getting paranoid, and people were honking at me behind me. They thought we were just talking. Do you know what I'm saying? They're honking. And now I look forward, and there was a car, and it had brand new plates on it. It was like an old Japanese SUV, like the mini SUV. And I look back, and there's a dude like this outside the, the, the car holding something. Yeah, holding just to see, make sure everything's cool. Bro, we're in an area where you don't want to fuck around this area. This, was, this had to be the dumbest fucking people in the world. Then I realized later they was tied up to old boy from my old hood that was trying to hit me up for paper. Fuck, yeah. man. And he was just like, you know. It's fucked up. I got people looking out for me, though. You know, I'm not saying I'm, I'm, not saying I'm invincible. Here's another another style pen. It's just beautiful that we can get into. Uh, I, can, I, I, I brought you. It's also. Oh, that's dope. Man. Yeah, all luxury. Rose that's gold, yellow gold, too. white gold. I, I, that's I saw oh, the colors. Oh, nigga, we good. balling this motherfucker. <laughs> Ow! Yo, he's he's eating these. I don't want you to eat. He's all gonna those. eat all those gummies, bro. Oh my God. Mike love, likes listen, the gummies. Listen, I love being um, intoxicated. Oh man, I love that. I love being. I love bro. that. Listen, know what I wonder? Um, since the beginning of time, even cavemen found something to stimulate them. Yeah. What was it? Um. Why is it that we need that? Not everybody, but why is it that the majority of the world need that? I don't know. I, I love to get fucked up. I know it sounds terrible, but I mean, I, I, responsibly. It's, no, it's but because it's, it's we want to be high. We yeah. want to connect to spirit. Really? And I think it's something about we're not liking something about feeling. ourselves. Or you're feeling a hole. Sometimes, yeah. in a way, it's not about money or anything. I realize at a certain point, man, money just buys convenience. It's not going to change anything. I could be upset about whatever. But I do realize sometimes that the world I feel like I'm almost even or I'm below. I don't feel, so that, that when I get fucked up, I get elevated and I feel above it. That's how I feel, you know, me personally. But I have a question that, that goes with that. Like, I have three young kids. I got, my life, I got my life started late. So, you know, I got a six-year-old, a five-year-old, and an almost two-year-old, right? <laughs> I can't get too fucked up around them. When they sleep, I'm lit. I'm out. When you, when you, had, when you were raising your kids, did you ever get were you ever like really high and being with them? Yeah. <laughs> and listen, right? I know that I have a son that's 21, I have a daughter that's 23. And I see myself talking, I'm smoking. And I, when I smoke, I smoke like this, and I, and I smoke like this, and they look at it, and they don't know whether to take the drink from me or not. <laughs> and I think, I said, wow, are you smoking? I give it to them. I'm like, what the fuck? But I don't say anything, because right. if I do it, it's not bad for them to do it. But how about when they were like, Six, five, or seven, or eight. Did you ever smoke? Did you, were you ever high when 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 they were when they were young? I've been high on cocaine at times when my kids oh, were young. Okay. I've been back in the days. I've always been high around my kids, but now we have a different understanding. Me, and my kids, we went to therapy together, and mm -hmm. now we just dealing through life together. You know, I'm so happy that we have a relationship. If it wouldn't if it wouldn't have turned out the way it did, we wouldn't have had a relationship. And right. as I get older in life, I'm just. I'm I'm just cool with not being right and just being okay as long as I can be in a, a relationship with my kids. That's my main no, objective, man, is being in well, relationships with them. Well, may, I mean, this is something that's been very lucrative for me. This is a great thing. Um, we get to also, you know, do some cool charities and, and you know, it's it's. I love what the brand represents. But my question is, um, what 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 what, what, you, what what made you want to get into into in cannabis? Well, listen, I never really anticipate getting into cannabis. You know, my brother-in-law and us, we bought a um, dispensary, right? Right. And I was telling him I don't think that was a good idea. You know, <laughs> from my experience with um, dispensaries at that time, this is during the boom of weed and- Oh yeah, people getting robbed around, and shit. Yeah, I hung around crazy. a lot of people. But um, I was doing a movie five years ago, I believe, and robbed my partner here. And him and my brother-in-law was talking about getting into the weed business. And he informed me, and he gave me the ins and outs, and I saw it was a no-brainer. So I said, yeah, this That's what I was want me. to do. No-brainer, yeah. I know this is, um, this, is another, this is another form of cash flow in this world, in the planet. Right. And just the fact that um, we got in there at a very um, infantile stage, at the beginning stage, getting our license and stuff. And that's very difficult to do right now. Oh, it's really tough. I mean, we got it early, thank God. But yeah, yeah, almost impossible to do right now. Yeah. And we just have a great operation, and we have a great team of people. And, man, um, if you don't mind later, when we finish, I'll show you around what we plan on doing. I mean, I, I got the rest of the day. shit. Yeah, it's going to be. I got everything taken. I, I, I've been looking forward for this day for since the, the email, so I've been juiced about it. Hell this, yeah, bro. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been super hyped. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, just because I'm such a big mm -hmm. boxing fan, right? Like, what do you think about the boxing, like boxing, where, where, how box, where boxing is today? 
Boxing today is all about show business now. It's not about getting the best fighters and putting them against say who's the best fighter in the world. Yeah. It's not about machoism. It's not about that who's bad, who's bad. It's about who makes the most money, who's going to make the most money. How can we get the best fights for these guys to make the but, most but money? But how, how do you feel about these judges calling these close fights, like like that Triple G Canelo fight, like shit like that? I think that's having to do with judges just not knowing what the fuck they're looking at. Oh, you don't think they're corrupt? I, I'm definitely at too, but I think yeah. mostly they just don't know what the fuck they're looking at. Yeah, that's some crazy shit, man, just to see. But like, um, do you, okay, do you think today, if you were in your prime, you were 21 right now, yeah. you're prime 21, yeah. and you shot yourself into the future to 2019 and had to fight one of these big heavyweights like Joshua or someone like that? Do they, you think, I listen, um, I hate to say because... No, you have to ask them. I don't. I don't know. Listen, I'm a different. I was a different kind of a person and stuff. I wasn't a nice guy. These are nice guys. I was mean. I want to attack my <laughs> spit on them and stuff. I don't know. How would that affect that psychic? I know, but I'm saying, do you think you you see you you'd still be the champ today? Don't you think for sure? I would, yeah, I would like to think that my ego tells me that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my ego yeah. tells me that. Who Who do you like right now? Like in like doesn't matter. Middleweight, welterweight, heavyweight. Who, 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 who right now? Who you? Who a, listen. Up? It's a guy out there. The Cholo brothers are fucking dynamite fighters too. Okay. Two, you know those guys? I barely. Oh, the vaguely. Cholo brothers. These are some bad little fuck. They're twins. They're both champions. They're bad. Oh yeah, the twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They okay. should fight um, Ganello and those guys. These I would like to see what happens because these guys are fighters, man. Right. And um, it's this little guy. Of course, you know the guy from um, Ukraine. He's the master, Lomachenko. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. He's the best. And now they got a guy catching up with him that he's gonna have to fight one day. This guy called. Giovante Davis. You ever hear of him? Called Tank? Yeah, yeah, of course. That's he, the fight. Me, me and him got into a little argument on... on That's on, the fight. Him and Lomachenko. You know what I mean? Who's going to win yeah, that We fight? got an argument on Twitter. He said some shit. After, after, after Pacquiao beat, beat Broner, uh -huh. um, Pacquiao beat Broner and he was saying some shit. And I was like, all right, well, let's bet a chain on it. You know what I'm saying? Because he, he was like, yo, yo, me next. You know, Javante versus, uh, versus, versus Pacquiao. And I was like, all right, well, let, let's bet a chain on it. And he was like, it got to be a million dollar chain. I'm like, motherfucker, a million dollar chain ain't shit. What you talking? Come on, bro. Let's get this going. <laughs> too many black fuck. people in this life. <laughs> yeah, I can hear fuck. too many black people in this fuck life. Fuck you mean, bro. Like, let's go. <laughs> I ain't talking shit. Yeah, you know, but like, uh, he's a bad motherfucker. Yeah. But, so, you know, until he fights, he ain't, he's bad. They may know. But until he fights the Ukrainian, Limachenko, he's not number one. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, no, I was just, I was just curious. I was That was something that I brought up. And I was like, wow, man, it's it's been a minute since I've done an interview this lit. <laughs> like I feel good right now. Like I feel fucking amazing. We have a good time in here, man. No, this is this is crazy. This is just again, man. One being with one of my uh, my top idol legends. You know, what I'm saying I'm not starstruck from nobody. I've met. But tell everyone. me, how do you drive your car? How do you get around in your car? Oh, that's okay. So you know how you how you can fight with the with the, with yeah. the and you how you can play football. Yeah, I get in the car and it becomes fucking. I used, listen, no. I used to be that way when I had all the fancy cars. I knew the cars. I had them down yeah. pack. I just knew the. Nah, I couldn't drive nothing now. Yeah, do yeah. you even drive anymore? No, I don't drive. People drive me. I don't even drive yeah, anymore. No, I get nasty in these cars now. You know, we get. We get Look, so I was saying, Mike, drive the Bugatti. These new Veyron Bugatti. Yeah. yeah. Nigga, I didn't know how to get start the car. I well, didn't hey, know no excuse. The Veyron, the Veyron, and the Chiron. Yeah. Those are very hard cars, cars to figure out at first. I didn't know nothing. Like I, a spaceship. I said, "What do I do? It is what like the fuck do I do?" Yeah. I couldn't do nothing with the car. <laughs> what do I do? That's how I would be, man. I'm fucking low tech, bro. Oh, man. Keep it low tech, dude. So you never thought about going back into like, um, you, you know, actually, you know what? Well, we'll get, you never thought about going like like going to coaching and trying to do the stuff like that. Listen, that's so complicated. Listen, know what kind of guy I am? I'm difficult. I'm I'm I'm, I'm hard. But I'm just starting to become a good parent. You know what I mean? Man, I have no patience and shit. These guys got so. It's like being a shrink. It's like being a mother, a parent, a psychiatrist. You're so many different things. A teacher. It's just man. And you yeah. think, um, listen, you can't believe some of the issues some of these young kids have. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, that's true. Yeah. No, that makes sense because I have no patience either. But at the same time, to hear this kid's story, they going through some shit, then it just puts you. That's in, yeah. a big oh, time. But listen, just look at this. All right, now you gotta take care of this. All right, listen. Um, I just found out. Um, my mother, my mother just, my mother just, can't, my mother has AIDS, and my girlfriend's pregnant. Listen, hold on. What? 
That's it. That's that's kind of the stories that you hear. Hypothetical. Oh no, it's happened. It's my happened. Mo- yeah, my mother. My mother has AIDS. And my girlfriend's <laughs> pregnant, and I'm right. 16 years old. Right. What do okay. I do? Okay. Yeah. Trying to figure out how to connect with people and their well, different issues. I, I I was just curious about that. But my next. This is funny because now I'm high. I'm trying to think of things and go was, for it. So do my, it, bro. My, my 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 last. My, my, well, the only main thing I thought about. And I know it sounds silly. I'm a movie buff. I watch a lot of movies. I fuck around the whole thing. Did you ever watch that HBO special they made with you, Michael J. White, the the uh, the Tyson yeah, movie? Yeah, I did that. No, you watched it? Yeah, I watched that. That's like how long ago was Michael that? Michael J. White played yeah. you? Like yeah, it was like the old. It was an HBO when Tyson movie. When I got movie. out of prison in '95, when I was in prison, they made it. So let me ask you a question: What did yeah. you think about that? You think that was somewhat accurate the way no, they? Um, it wasn't that accurate, but the guy did have some similarities to me. He right. did. He did a good job. I Michael thought. Michael J. Yeah, I thought he's he did, good, man. He did a good job. No, but I mean like. <sighs> Remember the incident where, where uh, Malcolm Jamal Warner played your best friend? Um, no, Malcolm Jamal Warner, yeah. Played your best friend in the movie? Yeah. I'm saying the movie? Yeah. Who was that dude in your life? Rory, he's my best. You know what happened? He, I was um, training so much I didn't have no friends. I was in Casket. I was training so much and I fought so much. I fought 15 times in one year, so I didn't have time to socialize with people. And 30 miles north of me was... Auburn, New York, and I was friends with his brother because his brother was an athlete, but his brother got married and he lived his life, and I, I guess they didn't want me being involved because I was single and young, so I started hanging out with him. We started hanging out, became close friends. So did you really, um, he, was he was he like a manager of yours or something at one point? Or? Yes. Okay, so remember that in the movie, there's a part where, where y'all walk in late to practice, and, it, uh-huh. and the, the coach is mad, forgot who, who he worked under Cuss, uh-huh. and he was mad. And you're like, man, fuck this. Did you really go in the ring and hit them people and knock them dudes, the, the sparring partners out? They're like, nah, fuck this. No, no thanks, Mr. Tyson. Yeah. And they walked out. That happened? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit. He was just, like, just knocking dudes out like they're one point, pow. Yeah. What yeah. you want to do? No, nah, I was just curious if that was, if that was accurate because um, when I was in college and we played football, I remember um, my coach – would always say before the games, what did Custom Model say? Bad intentions. Yeah. He's like, you need to go out there with bad fucking intentions. Bad intentions. And it was funny. He always would say that. That's you know? a trip. Yeah, bad intentions. I heard punch through him. Bad intentions. Oh, that's crazy, man. My train though is coming to bad intentions. <laughs> ben, where do you think we come from? What do you mean? Who are you? Who are you? What are we? What's your purpose here? Um. <sighs> My purpose here is to to who, who you came no really who you came from, where you gotta go. We think when you die. Oh fuck! Did you really ask me that? <laughs> you think you think this is gonna really go away? You think this no? What's happening? Now? Forget our body. That body's not. But what you feeling right now? What you thinking right now? That no one can hear. You think that's gonna go away? So this is the crazy part. Um, you think that dies? It's what you think when no one no, can hear. No, you, no, you no. Think that dies? I, I've all, for most of all my life, I was afraid of death. I've been afraid of it for. All my life, it fucks me up. In fact, now if I think about it too deep, I think about like, no matter what I do, like there's no certainties, right? But death is certain, right? And no matter what you do, we don't know. Okay, death could true. be another okay. form of living. True, true, true. So I thought about it. I said, listen, I think about my kids now, and I'm so worried about how they're gonna live, and and I want them to be have the best life. I don't want them to die. You know, I'm just thinking of something to, to be on some Peter Pan shit. But I'm like, okay, well, in 2200. We ain't going to be here for sure. Who knows? Whatever. And I think about it. But I've only had two real best friends of my adult life. Like after 25 years of age, I've had two best friends of my life. One of them was my godfather. And then I was the best man at his wedding for the other one. Both of them passed away. Both of them very successful. One black, one Asian. Asian guy owned a quarter million dollar company. Quarter billion dollar company. The black dude owned a $700 million company called World Star Hip Hop. Right, it's my best, you know, one of my best friends in my life, and they both passed away. When they both passed away, I got weird with myself, and I said, "This can't be it. Oh. There's no way." You because know, the universe say about that money. They leave. Don't worry about that. We'll take care of it. But come on, come with me. You right. have some more work to do. Yeah. So, so I, I think about it like, and I think like, I know my mom is getting there. She's getting, she's getting older. I'm just saying, like, damn man, I don't know. You know, she's not gonna be around. That's, that's kind of crazy. How you know now I'm kind of taking care of her. Why I'm taking care of her, in a certain sense. And I say, you know, how do you have conversations? This can't be it. You know what I mean? So I'm going to tell you something crazy. This is true story, 100% true. My younger son is five years old right now. When Q passed away, he was three, barely three, like two and change, three. 
So when Q was around a lot, he doesn't remember any of that. So he, I doubt, I mean, he knows the guy's black, but there's a lot of black people that you know he sees. He doesn't know that this guy is really, he wouldn't remember him, right? So five months after Q died, I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in none of that shit. I'm just not, I don't believe in a lot of things. You know, I'm, I'm very skeptical of a bunch of things, but, uh, you know, I am spiritual to a certain, you know, to, to a, a certain extent. And um, my wife walked over to my son and goes, hey, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, mommy, I'm just playing. And he goes, well, you're talking. Who are you playing with? He goes, oh, I'm playing with Q. And my wife stopped. My wife believes in all this shit. I don't, right? My wife stopped. She goes, no, my wife believes in this shit, too. And she goes, she goes in this shit. what did you say? He goes, I'm playing with Uncle Q. And he goes, Where, where's Uncle Q at? And our house, is in the, in the area they're at, it's a dining room. There's a corner glass. It's all glass here, all glass here. And you could see out into like a little forest area. So my wife goes, Where, where's Uncle Q at? And he goes, it's right there, mommy. It's right there. And so she just freaked out and calls me immediately. She's like, hey, baby, this what happened. I was like, oh, man, you know, whatever. It's like, you know, who fucking knows, okay? That night, we're giving them a bath. My, my wife has the exact same earrings I made Q before he died. Like, and he had them when he, was, when he was dead. Big diamond earrings. Exact color, exact same size even. And he goes, hey, mommy, you have the same earrings as Q. And she goes, what are you talking about? He goes, Uncle Q has the same earrings. And so I said, all right, hold on. So I went and I went through a bunch of pictures. I showed her a picture of Baron Davis, the NBA player. I was like, who's this? He goes, I don't know daddy. I was like, all right, who's this? I don't know daddy. It was a little Uzi Vert, right? And then, who's this? He goes, that's Uncle Q. He's never seen a picture on the phone or anything. I was like, that fucked me up. That Q was around watching over my family and just like, that just, it fucked me well, up. Think that's about amazing, this. man. Well, think about this. Maybe sometimes Q is that bug that's flying around the house and will squash him. <laughs> and he's trying to tell you, hey, man, what's going on? It's me. <laughs> and I killed them, right? Just, yeah. I don't know, man. You know, um, I want to believe that we go to rest. And then Are another, you crazy? Rest? <laughs> Do you feel like resting now? No, take your body away. Yes, for your energy. Do you feel like resting? You think nah. we're going to rest? No. Nah. We I'm don't just, rest. Our body needs rest, but we don't need rest. So what do you... So, so what, okay, so... That's just where I'm at. I'm afraid of it still. I'm uncertain. Where do you feel like? Like, are you afraid of death? Nah, no way. I used to be as well. No way. No way. Okay, so now when you think you 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 die as as uh, your body dies, right? You die. What do you think happens then? I don't know. I believe that we go to a universe. We go to a different universe. Do you believe in heaven and hell? No way. I used to be- you know what I believed that one time. I believed that um, we just died. The energy died. I believe, and then I took, and then I took this um, ancient medicine, this ancient medicine drug, whatever you want to call it, it's called a toad. And um, <laughs> man, um, I seen death. I died, and I realized death is death is not as bad. Death is another part of living. Damn. I mean, I'm sure you've had friends pass away, your parents, yeah. or somebody, whatever. When when. When you feel how you feel, like, has there anybody recently, like, passed away? My you- friend, my friend, mother, who I was from, dad, dad, this morning. Wow. Damn, man, I'm sorry. So, yeah, no, like. But it's good, though. I didn't, I would be feeling bad, too, but I understand. My wife and my mother, love me, I understand in my perception of it. My perception of it is not from a sad perspective. My selfishness of, of their physical flesh is what I miss. Their flesh is right. able to do something for me. That's why right. I would, you know what I mean? They can hug me. They can love me. They can go to the store. They can buy me food. You know, they can talk to me when I need conversation. All that stuff is no longer around. So when you pass away, do you think that you're going to be able to see her again? No. 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 So where the hell do you think? What, I mean, the, in another form, maybe. Maybe in another form. Because listen, when I took this drug and I died, I wasn't this. It was nothing. It was just the energy. It was no arms, no legs, nigga. It was like, <laughs> oh, shit. Nothing but feelings. Consciousness, feeling, just feelings. I feel like I'm physically, I'm, I'm feeling physical pain from these feelings that I'm feeling. I'm feeling the pain of everybody I ever hurt. Damn. You imagine feeling the pain of everybody you ever hurt. You offended, you struck, you, you assaulted, whatever you did. That's to the them. worst. That's the worst punishment ever. That's yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah, it's a trip. It's a trip. <laughs> it's a trip. Oh shit, man. But it's not only that, it's everything, it's every drug, every every liquor, every soda, every pop, every anything I've always feel, anything I ever done in my life, I feel it again. Anything I ever done. Anything I ever it's everything, everything, every feeling. 
Now you're going to fuck me up tonight when I go to sleep. Huh? Just, you know. How many hours of sleep do you get tonight? I don't get any. Damn. Three hours the most. Yeah, fuck, man. Do, and then I have to turn to because I get freaked out being when it's too quiet alone. Then my head starts fucking with me about death and shit. <laughs> That's how I used to be. That's yeah. why I, I think about other things. But I thought about it like in the last 10 years, I get like four hours, maybe five. And it just, it fucks my, I, I just don't get it because people say, oh, you need sleep. You know, that's why Robin Harris died. He didn't have no sleep. And no, blah, blah. Robin Harris was, uh, Robin Harris had the disease where you drop so sleep. What was that disease called? Here? Narcolepsy. 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 Oh, that's shit. what he was. I didn't know that. Because okay. he would come in the office. I had an office in California back then. He would come in the office, and my partner used to pay him because he started, he opened up the show for Robin in um, that club. Uh, what was the name of it? But anyway, they opened up that club. And he used to come and, we, and Robin used to fall asleep in the office, always in the chair. He wasn't just tired? No. He oh, fall fuck. In the office, yeah. I didn't know that shit, man. That's crazy. He, was, uh, he, was the, he started all the black comedians, gave them all their first start. Everybody, step Eddie Murphy, everybody else. Oh, you know what, man? You, you, you got to meet uh, Donnie Yen. You did Hip Man. Donnie Yen's my man, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Is, 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 he, is he an actor or is he actually can kick some ass? He can kick some ass too, but he's very down. He, he's hurt himself, he's had mm-hmm. a lot of surgeries. A lot of injuries, yeah, you know? Yeah, a lot of surgeries. Fuck. Damn, that's crazy. Because when I saw that, I was like, whoa. I already love the series as it is. He's an yeah, awesome man, person, so. man. Yeah. You met Jackie Chan before, right? Yeah. Yeah, I got to meet Jackie Chan. I just thought about him doing the stunts and shit, doing all that stuff. He was more he was more reserved. The other guy was just Jackie. Um, Donnie? Donnie Yen is just awesome. Don't you know him? He's just awesome. He's not even Chinese. He's Chinese, but he's from San Francisco somewhere. I think Washington, where he originally from. Donnie Yen is an American? I mean, American, American born, born Chinese? I, I think so. Wow, oh. I didn't know. So he could speak English then? Very well. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. Very well. We told him, he's awesome. He's an awesome fucking guy. You're not going to believe oh. he's fucking like us. He he's like us. Hey, pod. did you ever meet, you ever meet uh, Steven Seagal? Yeah, I did a movie with him. Oh, he, he really knows Aikido, right? He's a real bad motherfucker. Well, that's what they say. Oh, <laughs> shit, damn, that's fucked up. <laughs> That's what they say. I used to love watching this dude, and people talk about this. There's a folklore about, you know, like, hey, he could put you down in one second. Doesn't matter if he's Aikido or watch these videos. Dude, he teaches cops down in New Orleans. Yeah, so he does cop training. So you don't know, you don't know. Well, that's why when I went there, I was like, this is going to be interesting. We're going to find out if he really, you know, he's really good. He's legit. Good shit. This is going to be interesting. Did you find out? Well, he he never had the fight scenes with me. He He didn't show up. So it's still up in the air. What? If he's legit. I don't know if he's legit. Yeah. Damn. Like, does he have skills? Can we put in the movie who he fucked up? Didn't he fuck up some people on the street? I don't know. Street man. fights with he, him? He has a show. It's on like A and E, where he does cop. He does well, training. I remember, I remember, um, with cops. He was supposed to be in some altercation with Van Damme. I guess Van Damme like really backed up. Backed I mean, I met John Claude Van Damme a couple times. Man, that dude is small. Man, he's yeah. little, he's way smaller than I thought. He comes in here. No. Oh, he does? Yes. John Clavendall smokes? Okay. Yeah. That's yes. good. Who, who who, have you met and be like, damn, you smoke? Holy shit. I don't know. Fuck, I forget. I've met so many people. No, smoke. I know. I can't I even can't imagine. imagine. Like, even when, when you talk about- I forget they smoke, you know? No, when you talked about Michael Jackson on, on Michael's thing, when you said, you said he didn't know who you were, I, I, I was so mad at Mike, even though he's passed away, rest in peace. Like, I was so mad. Like, how the fuck you not know who Tyson is? No, he was fucking with me. Oh, he was fucking with oh, you. He was fucking with me, yeah. He knew who I was. Oh, man. That's even worse. Listen, I'm right there. He's standing by the door waiting for a car to come pick him up. Yeah. And everybody, his band played, gave me his, uh, the fucking drumsticks. The girl came me. Everybody's asking for my autograph. Everybody's taking pictures with me. And he's just sitting there waiting for the car to pick him up. I said, well, let me just go over there to Mike and just let me say something to him, right? And when I go up to him, I was going to say, and he turned around, where do I know you from? <laughs> I said, Fuck. I said, okay, um, no way. I said, I'm nobody. I came to say I'm a fan. I said, oh, that motherfucker. Did you want to hit him, man? Like, Well, you know, I, I, I said, fuck. I was all in all. And when he said that, I was like, fuck, okay, cool. But after the, that, that night, I said, fuck Michael Jackson. He's an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> you know, he used to talk to me in third person. When we meet like he six did? like this, yeah, he would talk to him well, and tell well, he me. He never did that. He never did that I was like, me. okay. Dude, listen, let's just keep it real too. Like, who the fuck are we? We're fucking savage. Where are we come from? We're fucking from barbaric Roman areas. Everybody's fucking each other in the ass. What do you expect? Shitting on each other. <laughs> <laughs> who are we? I mean, you're not, I mean wrong. you're not wrong, Mike. Who are we really? You're not wrong. Who do we dude. think we are? <coughs> we don't even, even, um, 
who we, are. we don't even have to perce- we don't have no perception perception of what we really are, what we what we fucking um descend from. We come from monsters, barbarian people that eat each other. Yeah. You really read all those Alexander the Great books, huh? Yeah, he's an amazing, confused young man. Fuck. I need, amazing. I, need, I need I need to I need to He get was him. a drug addict too, an alcoholic. That's why he walked so far and went so far to talk to the fucking one his head. Tell him he's a car, my car. I can't be stopped. Damn, I need, I need, I need to get, I need, I need to. I'm, I'm, what drugs would he do, Mike? He do a bitch with cannabis. No, he do hash. I think he brought hash to the um, Afghanistan. Oh really? He bought hash. That's Fuck. incredible. Where, 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 where was he, he from? Took it was, from wasn't, them. wasn't he? Wasn't he from Europe? He's from Greece. He's from yeah, Macedonia. Greece. Yeah. yeah, Macedonia. I thought he was from Greece. Six so, hour, seven hour ride. So he on really, elephant? No, on car. They had, listen. There was cars back then. No, and if you drove a car, it would take you drove a car six to eight hours. Hour, six to eight hours. Oh, hour I'm saying how, 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 how did Alexander the Great get to fucking <laughs> get to horses Horse. and, and, and boats and shit? Holy shit. Trip, and when they traveled, they didn't travel. You no, know, I always was under the auspices. They traveled with a bunch of men, 50,000 men, 60,000. No, it was a party, like 50,000 men, 60,000 women, little kids, them drummers, fucking. Um, like a whole city. A city, yeah. Architects and everything, everybody. So, um, fucking um, people that build shit, all of the architects, everybody, we all drive the party. And everybody's getting high, drinking, and it's just everything we everything we 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 go upon, we suck it up, we eat it up. He it's was part of our country. Pre Rome? He's before Rome. Before Rome. Yeah. Damn. Did what he do pave the way for Rome? Listen. To be built. A hundred percent. Roman people thought he was a god. Mm. You never hold you never heard anything about Roman people until Alexander died at three thirty six BC. Then Rome came out because they thought he was a god. That's all you heard. Was, was he get, was he getting bitches? Was he getting pussy or no? Bitches and niggas. He was fucking everything. Yeah. <laughs> what? Hold on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold on, bro. <laughs> Alexander the Great was fucking dudes too. Yeah. That's how they rolled back then, bro. Holy shit! That I was. Wow, that's crazy. That's. <laughs> whoa. How, how do you feel about like how like now that you know like like United Airlines is trying to put like the the sub category now where you know someone's saying are you male female or are you X like how do you feel about the whole transgender thing like people are saying like like that shit is a trip to me I'm I'm just saying no, like you no. were born a certain way man no, like no why no why is a trip to you because how old are you 40, 51? 46. 46? because you 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 you're fucking um, primitive. <laughs> We're primitive. That's why. That's why it freaks us out. We're primitive. We don't understand what happened. Listen, in Damn. Roman era, they would they'd fuck you and they they shit it right right in public. They did it in public. It was open. It wasn't no behind closed door. They did it right walking the street, going to your school, going to your bakery. They did it right in the streets. Everything. Damn. And that's just the Roman. Roman's young. Roman era is young. Let's say nine fifty BC. Something. That's nothing. Right. You know that's that's the fucking that's, that's young well, shit. Right. I mean the transgender stuff, you know. That's before God, because he's he's young. Well, when you think about all of the chemicals that we're comprised of, you know, we're we we come together right. in our mother's womb, and it's billions and trillions of atoms and molecules that make us up, and there's all these fluids and hormones and transmitters and all kinds of shit going on in our brain. So some people, when you come through the portal, maybe you come in and you get a male body, but your mind is a female mind. I can believe that, okay. You have a female wiring. Okay, what I'm getting at is this, and and, and, and I hope this doesn't come off as... And vice saying, versa, like, and some, and all the way in between as well, Right. you know? But you know, people say like, oh, you're being, uh, whatever, just, you know how Twitter people complain and they say shit like, oh man, you know... um, this person said something about black people. This person said about Asian people. Cancel all that cancel culture shit. It's just like, yeah. dude, fucking calm down. Yeah. I used to love watching, listening to Richard Pryor fucking tapes and making fun of Asian people or listen to Eddie Murphy and listen to these comments. I didn't, I mean, if. if Bruce, Lee, it's, Bruce it's, Lee didn't. What's that? Bruce Lee didn't like that. Oh, you know anything true. about Bruce Lee? Yeah, yeah. Bruce Lee didn't fuck around with that yeah, at no, all, not true. a little bit. With what? Yeah. Fucking with Asian, making stereotype. Yeah, he making fun play. of him, yeah. He was too he had much a chip on his, on his yeah, shoulder. He didn't fuck up. around a little bit, not even a little he bit. He lost jobs because of it. 
You yeah, know what I mean? Clean so, and play with that shit a little bit. But right? what, little what bit. I'm getting at is like now people are so sensitive about certain yeah. things. You know what I mean? You sit there and you don't know. Like I don't know how to address somebody. You know what I mean? Like oh hey Vic. Oh no, I mean Victoria. I don't. You know you don't this know how to. Is, fuck this it. is the thing, right? We all make mistakes. We don't know sometimes what to do, yeah. what to say. But some people do it. Vic- you know what I mean? Yes, viciously. They know it's offensive and they do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, we, I, 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 we 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 make mistakes out of you know ignorance. You know, it's not our fault. Of course, people know what they're doing and they do it. Yeah. yeah. No, man, it's a it's a fucking crazy time. Welcome to the future. Yeah, no, it's fucking nuts. You know? Dude, my son has a fucking cell phone, bro. You know, it's like it's, yeah, it's shit crazy. Bugs me out. It's crazy. Yeah. Man. Listen, um, Steve Jobs must have been a very interesting person. He didn't want to ask the information from them. He didn't want to ask anybody. How do I get here? What time is it? Anything. Somebody he may ask somebody what some directions they must have dissed them or something. So he may you just you can get your own directions in your phone. You don't have to ask anybody wow. shit. You don't have to communicate with nobody. You don't have to care about their feelings. How they care? Cause you only care about the phone. Now the phone don't have any feelings. Damn. No, yeah, I, he's, he's, I think Steve Jaw smoked weed though. Did a lot of acid. I did a lot of acid. You know, acid's a San Francisco thing, man. You know, I, I lived in San Francisco when, when I was in college. Well, San Francisco is an uh, acid thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what and, I mean? And I fucking did acid out there. You know what I mean? And that was like a crazy thing because... It's good had, stuff. Oh, man. no. I thought I had, I had some fucking crazy times on it. I, You know how you, you have a TV and let's say it goes 1 to 65 volume. You already know at like 8, you can't hear that TV. At 21, and I know I have a little bad ears because being in the studio, being a DJ... But like at 25, you might be able to hear a little bit. I'm like quiet. So imagine when it's at like six and there's 60 settings, 60 levels of, of volume on a TV. I was on acid and I could hear one. You know what I mean? Like yeah. level one. I would hear it and it was loud. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? This is crazy. I remember I was like, I, I, you know, I was dunking a junior year in high school. And I remember we saw this basketball court outside in the Sunset, Sunset District. And it was regulation. If anything, it might have been nine foot ten, whatever. And I was like, hey, man. I was like, fuck, I want to go grab the rim right now. That was nothing just because we had no ball. And I'm wearing orange hoodie and a bl- royal blue like sweats. I'm wearing like yellow. Sh- I look crazy. And I jumped up and I thought I jumped high as fuck. And my teammate goes, hey, bro, you came about 50 inches away from the rim. He said, you came so far away from touching that rim. Like, what the fuck you talking about? The only thing I do didn't know is you don't want to drive on acid. That's like the no, last thing. No. Tell me this, man. You can learn a lot. What makes you happy, man? Who are you? What makes you happy? What makes what me what happy? Makes you I see you got fancy cars and stuff. No, fuck all that. What that shit happy? don't mean nothing. What really makes you happy? What really makes me happy is hearing my kids laugh. When I hear my daughter, when I hear her cry, it just, my, my whole day is like, yeah. fuck, man. When I hear my kids laugh and they're having a good time and they come back and say, daddy. Like, I have a fucked up day. I sit in traffic for two hours and I'm mad about being in traffic which is first world problems and then I'm mad that someone fucked up and didn't get a delivery right and then I'm mad about somebody else because they told somebody some secret information about our company and I get home. Like, daddy, what are you what doing? What do you think your kids want to do? You know, I don't know, man. I think my son, my oldest son. How old wants, are they? Uh, the oldest one is six. He's almost seven. Oh, God. Young. But I think he wants to be in something like marine biology. He wants to be like a. He wants to do something with water. He's a water boy. That's loves awesome. loves swimming. Loves sharks. He can name every species of shark. Since four years old, he can name every species of shark. He corrected somebody at an aquarium. I love that. Yeah. And, Dope, and people dude. were like, the guy was like, no, no, no. And I was like, I was like, are you sure? And he goes, I'm positive. <laughs> and like, my son is very, very smart. Spoke late, but is very smart. My middle son, he's just like me. He's the splitting image, exactly like me. He is gonna be a fucking. Lady killer, he's gonna get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> he's gonna fuck around anything else. My daughter, I can't tell you, it's too young, but she's starting to, you know, kind of be spoiled. That's what makes me happy. My, seeing my kids good, that makes me happy more than anything. It's I know that sounds terrible. Man. Well, my wife is good too. If my, everything is good with me and my wife, man, my shoulders are like, oh, fuck, I can chill. Yeah, do you, you know? Can breathe. But because I travel so much, I was on sixty flights last year. I've been on thirty three this year, thirty four this year, and it's like fuck you know like and they're wondering why i'm like i'm trying to do this shit because i don't want to work in a few more years i want to just sit back be like oh you're gonna get bored no i won't because my kids will keep me keep me occupied i'm good that's what i want to do that's dope man i feel like i was putting this worth to to, to, i don't want my sons to be jewelers i don't want them to be in music you know if they want to whatever i just want them to be i want to be listen i'm a young boy coming up in the world the most some of the most attractive things the world has to offer in the history of the world is entertainment and jury. Yeah. And that's what my father do, and I'm not gonna do that. 
That's not gonna have to oh, happen. Fuck, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I just he he's such a fucking character. Like I just I watch. Why did you don't want him in that business? Cause you don't want him dealing with those kind of personalities. Yeah, man. I just want him yeah. to do something. You know, like I don't know, man. It was just it's it's a. Uh, all the scumbags I've met, I can't imagine how many scumbags you've met in your life, but I, I met so I many. I worry about my son. I have an older son, too. And listen, um, I see him. He starts to hang out with these guys that I know that used to, you know, they've been ex-mafia. There's these guys, that, and it's just weird that um, that he follows that fucking, and I say, it must be something mm. to do with me. That's why he follows. He thinks that I'm a Instinct tough guy. Instinct inside. Yeah, he thinks I'm a tough guy. And if he wants to be a tough guy, he has to have you do I know these kind of guys to be tough guys. Mm. You know what I mean? I think that's just instinctively that's what he thinks. But like, how old your daughter, you said? My, my son. No, how old is your daughter, though? My daughter's 10, I have a 10-year-old. And then, the, the, how, didn't you no, have one that's... I have, my oldest one is 28. Okay, besides, well, do you have one that's like like between 18 and 20? I'm 16-year-old. Okay, 16-year-old. If she wants to go on a date and the guy meets you, aren't they scared? Yeah. <laughs> I tell them this. I say, listen, come here, man. Well, you. Um, well, I mean, this is all I'm saying to you. Whatever you do to my daughter, I'm gonna do to you. Oh man, <laughs> I love that line, dude. You I'm you, I'm whatever you do to her, I'm gonna do to you. I'm using that. Damn. Sorry, so make, brother. So make sure it's not a tongue kiss, okay? <laughs> 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 oh yeah, shit! Hell yeah. Yeah, man, I'm super I remember how I was a knucklehead with the girls and stuff, so I don't want my daughter to Come on, man. I lost like, my virginity yeah, when I was 12. You know what I'm saying? I was out. I was, I was a crazy kid, man. That's that's fucked up. Like, yeah, if, if I came to someone's... Well, you can't even scare them nowadays. You know, nature, you can't yeah, scare people. They're not scared anymore. It's supposed too. to happen. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's crazy. It's like, listen, isn't it weird that... Listen, explain this. Why do we need a mate? Why don't we die without a mate? Why we have so many girls? Why do we decide to get married? And say, hey, I don't want to do it no more with a lot of girls. It's one girl. Why do we decide to do that? It's Why not, listen, it's <sighs> nothing. I don't think it's something. Um, how I think it's not from a philosophical perspective. It's not something you could say. I think it's meant from God. It's meant from nature or something. Why do we do that? Why at the end of our life, somebody the, they they fool around all their life, and in their life they decide to to settle down with somebody. Why do they do that? I feel like it's for, well, me personally, I grew up in a broken home. Yeah. I'd like to have You have some, more, it would be more um, to your level not to be involved with somebody because you're used to not having true, a home. True, but, right? but, but I always I always yearn for having really? a, a happy household. You know what I mean? Like one thing now we don't do that we did. When I was a little kid, we did, and then and it fell apart. But my two, my kids, are my, well, my oldest kid has a lot of allergies. He has a lot of health issues. And um, they have a strict diet, and they eat dinner really early. What I want to do now when my daughter gets a little older, I want us all to eat dinner at the same time, eat at the same table, at least every night dinner. If we could do breakfast, that'd be great, but everyone's on different schedules. It's a different different day we live in. But, um, man, my bro, I'm so fucking high right now, bro. You <laughs> fucked my whole life. It's all good, brother. Good. No, good. I'm saying uh, uh, um, it was a sense of security. I don't want to be. I don't. I've, I've heard. I've read stories about people dying because they were lonely and like certain things. And I don't have a lot of friends. You know what I mean. I have a ton of acquaintances, but I have very few friends in my life, like real friends. I don't have a lot. I'm a hard person to be around, I guess. But I love the fact that when I come home, my wife is home, the family's home. Boom. It's like you know, she's she has a good environment. It's it's good energy in the house. It's a good vibe, you know. And 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 I love to see my kids learn something about something every day. It's beautiful, man. And that's that's you know, that's for me. I, I want to settle down and have that life. You know, and 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 um, I see some of my boys who are fifty years old, late forties, early forties, and they're still in the club trying to fuck young girls. And I'm like, bro, what are you gonna do when you're sixty or seventy? He goes, oh, fuck it, I'll kill myself. I don't want to fucking be around. I'm sixty or seventy. And I'm like, oh, you tripping? Yeah, what happens when you're sixty? And you're like, yeah, I want to live, but I said I was gonna kill myself. Listen, I said that when I was in my twenties and stuff. I'm not gonna live. I'll kill myself. I wouldn't want to. I didn't want to get old and stuff. I am so happy I didn't do that. Right. You know, because what is old? Old is when you can't no longer function, I guess, right? Because <laughs> if we, if we, if we base a number on being old, we're going to be mistaken. I thought 50 was old. 50's not old. Yeah, no, you know what's crazy is 50's not old and it fucks me up because I'm close to 50 and it just, no, my, no. my sister's you gotta 50. Still think, you got to still think the same, trust me. Yeah. As long as you're taking care of yourself, looking out for yourself, you got to still think the same. So, damn, man. Cause I you're going to know more. I met Muhammad Ali like... 25 years ago maybe or 30 years ago I met Muhammad Ali 
and he was like kind of in like he he was kind of like you know like he was it was taking him 20 minutes to get a paper towel we were inside uh the palm restaurant on santa monica boulevard he was trying to get a, a paper towel out of the sink and he was in the bathroom which is me and him a small bathroom smaller than this and i was like so i got the shit and i got gave it to him so here you go champ and he goes listen right at one time he moved so fast you wouldn't be able to fucking see his hands can you believe that he moved so fucking fast you couldn't see his hands mm -hmm. now he can't move at all wait a second you saw Ali Box? I've seen him on television. Oh, okay. Oh, you know, on film. Right. Matt Speed is a demon. He's incredible. Damn, he's a big guy. Shit. He's a massive guy. No way people don't know that. Because yeah. he's such a smooth guy moving. They think of him as a lean. He's big. He's 6'4, no, 220 still, pounds. Not, yeah, he was a big Beast. fucking guy. Yeah. He was that fast? Shit. Yeah, he's lightning fast. It's dope, man. Damn man, do you you do you, do you, you don't train at all, right? You no, know, I, I work out, keeping the treadmill, exercise, but no, I don't do that heavy hardcore stuff. No more. Yeah, you know when 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 John Singleton passed, it fucked me up because he was relatively young, like fifty one. I knew like, John. Yeah, you knew John. I knew John. Well, that's, that's young. How, you know that's when I, mean? I saw him. He was in like Venice Beach somewhere area, somewhere we was. He said he was living on his boat. He was with Michael Rapport like a month ago. Yeah. Wow. And then he he went to go visit Michael Rapport do a stand up comedy act, and they talked. And, you know, I yeah. saw him, like, a year or so ago. I saw him at Whole Foods. And I just like, yo, man, that's young. You know, so I'm about and to I didn't even know anything was wrong with him. You don't know nothing's wrong with people. Yeah. You just don't know. We don't know anything. Don't people know. keep secrets. Oh, you know, I was going to ask you that, sure. too. What? Do you really think that there's just, it's, it's even if you keep yourself healthy, you keep yourself decent, you, you know, you're good, everything else, you think that, that there, there's, everyone has their own time, and no matter what you do, how good you keep your health or everything, it could just take you out. Yeah, listen, let's just talk about that. I believe everybody has their own time, right? But I believe preparing for your time is um, getting in the best shape possible you could be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not to just let yourself waste away. Yeah. You know, you stay healthy and have good love for yourself. Mm hmm no, it's good to say that, man. I'm, I'm I'm in the worst shape of my life right now. I've never been. <laughs> physically, I'm sorry. Physically, I'm in the yeah, worst no, shape listen. of my life. And my bounce back game ain't like it used to be. Do you know? No, I can you can rock. start. You can still start. Yeah, I need yeah. to. You start. Start walking the beach. Just start walking yeah. in the two mile, yeah. one mile, then two mile. Go on a treadmill. Start yeah. going to some sit up. Start eating different. Yeah. I've been eating different. Fuck the bread. Which, which is no, great. I've been eating different. Yeah, I'm, no I'm trying bread, to go low. Bro. Yeah, trying to go trying to go low carb. That's what happens when we get caught up in the world. We we gorge. Yeah. Damn. That's what the world do. They wait what's the, the what's world. the most you ever weighed? Around four hundred pounds. What, Mike? Yeah. Was it four hundred? Yeah. I'm an animal. What? <laughs> I'm a savage. When, I, when I'm doing my cocaine, when I come off my cocaine, I will eat the whole fucking, um, <laughs> um, what's that, Dairy Queen. That's my Ice thing, Dairy, 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 Dairy Queen. Queen. I'm going in, I will order like, tw um, fucking, you know, it comes in a box, 24 in a box. Yeah, 24 I order, in a box. I will order that, and then before that, I would get my fucking blimpy, my, 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 um, the thing the, with the Oreo cookie, the, you know, Oh yeah, 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 that, 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 that shake, big yeah. one, yeah, yeah. the blizzard, what, the blizzard, bro? The, blizzard. Yeah, the big giant. I eat that, and then right before that, I take two. I, I open up my box of ice cream, and I take my two fucking sticks out, and start eating my ice cream and stuff. Then throw that away, then finish my. Bl oh man, I was a monster. You know after, what? I, 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 I didn't know. After cocaine, I would just go for ah, oh, I would just wow, bro. Just and what's gorge. the leanest you've been as an adult? As an adult, around two sixteen. What you you fought at two sixteen, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, shit. You know what I realized, man? And I realized this after I, I, st I haven't done coke in. Coke's horrible. It's yeah, been almost like two. Been, no, it's been twenty one years since I did coke, and I'm gonna tell you, the <laughs> never want to do it again. Don't care to. Don't want to. I find, some dude said this. I was at a Hollywood party at like Johnny Depp's house or some shit, and this dude goes, "Hey, man, you know what coke is? Coke is a, a drug. Is a drug with a high that doesn't exist." Mm. And when he said that, it fucked my whole life up because I realized yeah. I felt like I was a dickhead. You know, I was being an asshole, or whatever, and I was up, but I really wasn't like it. They really, I was chasing a high that didn't exist. That yeah. really, that was that made so much sense to me that like, yeah, that's a trip. Like when I see people do it now, I'm like, nah, man, I'm cool, man. And like, oh, why you being? I was like, bro, man, shut the fuck up, bro. I'm good, man. Go ahead, do your little, your little shit. Yeah. But it just didn't excite me. Like weed always excited me. I'll tell you things that that excite, like drinking lean. I was an addict, you know what I mean? Tell almost... me about the how does that work? Oh man, bro. Oh fuck, does it put so, weight on you and shit? It does for oh, sure. Oh fuck, I hate drugs that put yeah. weight on you. And shit. Yeah, so 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 I was addicted to this shit and codeine. At the, at the, yeah, codeine. So at the time, 
it was in in 2005 to 2009 it was like a 3200 a month a month habit today they don't they don't exist anymore right they have other ones but it's not the same these two companies Al Pharma and Octavis they're Octavis is one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world so they created this this thing that tasted delicious and you would just get so fucked up. It was a euphoric high. And you would just be leaning like, yo, I'm good. You could have sex. You do what the fuck you want to. You go to sleep forever. You just, you're just, you just fucking leaning, yeah, really. go to sleep forever. Don't yeah. wake up. Yeah, that too. <laughs> so a bottle of that now is like 10 grand. So I'd have Whoa. like, a, I'd, ha I'd have literally, let's see. I'd have a like 300... 20,000 a month habit if that was the case you know what I mean because I, when I got it it was nothing but they don't exist anymore so people are doing then people were going because it's purple people are getting great diamond tap putting a syringe in the grape diamond tap and poking a hole at the bottom of it and fucking taking it out you know what I'm saying so mixing it diluting it but I, that was a high that I love so much until I realized one your liver is about to fucking go because you're fucking ALT yeah. LT, uh, uh SLT whatever t levels would go up. My liver was enlarged. It was pushing my chest out. Oh. I gained a gang of weight. I was getting fucked up. So that was like something I love. I just miss. <laughs> Everything else is like I remember when I had my stomach surgery. They gave me propofol, and then they gave me morphine. And I got shot before too. So I remember I got I got morphine, and um, I got shot not being robbed. I was stopping a domestic violence thing, and I'll never ever jump in front of. But I could have told you that. Whoa, <laughs> yeah, I know. And uh, they jump you, motherfucker. They're yeah. fighting each other. You try to defend. Nothing you know, comes in between dick and pussy. Nothing. 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 As soon as you try to, man. But going on, I'm in the world's closer than dick and pussy once you get together. Yeah. <laughs> nothing closer. <laughs> Ain't nothing no hug. Closer. Ain't no hug. This. So you know, I I I, uh, I got morphine when I got shot. I was like, I literally within not even two minutes of this IV. I'm in pain. I'm in fucking pain. My back is like on fire. And I remember he gave me the, the morphine with the IV. And I was like, whoa. Damn, yeah. I'm fucking, I could eat a pizza I don't like right it. now. I'm hungry. I want to do I know, this. And I remember this. the most like when they like hit that. me that morphine, I was like, whoa. Yeah, I don't like yeah. it. Holy <laughs> shit. Gives me anxiety. <laughs> Fucks me up. Uh, no, while I'm on, I was cool. But yeah, no, I mean, I just. I love morphine when I had morphine. Morphine, <laughs> morphine was my thing. Hard to get that shit. <laughs> but they just, I just was told by, where the fuck was I? I was at a doctor's office somewhere. They just said ketamine is legal now. Yeah. Well, ketamine, my friends used to do that shit. They'd be, nah, I think they're dead. <laughs> I think they're fucking dead. I mean, what the fuck? Oh, fucking shit. Dead. Fuck all that, man. Fucking dead. Fuck no, all yeah, that. It's, hey, ke ketamine is strong, but they're saying that, I forgot who no, said it. No, they're doing therapy, ketamine treatments. Yeah, ketamine treatments. Yeah. But there's ketamine, regardless, I'm saying. They're doing something with it for like PTSD. I, I I did it. You got to do time. doses, I guess. I, mean, I did it. Doses. Yeah, Tell me I about that shit. And I was in a fucking, I was in a nightclub in New York City. I'm not, like I told you, I'm not religious. My dad was a minister and he forced me to go to church for 17 years or whatever, how many years. When I turned 18, I was like, man, fuck this church. Fuck everything about this. Fuck all this shit. Because <laughs> I hated that shit, right? I said, fuck this bitch ass shit. I remember I was on K. I was like 28 years old. I'm in New York City fuck. in a nightclub. And my boy goes, you know, when you see a lot, I don't know if you're done coke, but you see a line of coke or, you know, a bump. You're like, all right, cool. Yeah. You know, cool. Ain't no shit. It was hey, ketamine. Hey, you got to fucking white. do like. Anything you see white, you, you want to go up your nose. You got, <laughs> ketamine, you got to like put tiny little bits. I was like, man, shut your bitch ass up. Give me, man, give oh, me shit. Fuck, shit. Fuck. Shit. And my boy goes, oh, fuck, bro. That's Special K. And I you're was like. You're going to die? Fuck is Special K, man. What kind of shit? That's the name of the, the, the coke. And he was like. No, bro. Oh, oh. And then 30 minutes, 45 minutes later, Evan, my face is on the ground in a nightclub, bro. It's packed as a motherfucker. It's 1 a.m. Clubs go to 4 a.m. there. You know, shit pops till yeah. 3, 4. Yeah. My face, my nose is touching the ground. I'm face forward as if I'm doing a flat push up. And I'm <laughs> sitting there. Move. I said, Jesus, 7,500,000 times, right? Oh, I my said, God, Jesus, bro. Jesus, 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 please. Don't let me die. So and, then my boy, <laughs> and my boy goes, Hey, you suck in what's called a K hole. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know where the fuck I'm stuck. Don't you ever let me do that shit again, motherfucker. Whoa. The fuck is wrong with you? Stuck in the I was stuck in a K hole. I was on the floor for like fucking 30 minutes. The guy's like, hey, the club's in the cuss. I don't give a fuck what the club's gonna do, bro. Fuck. Nobody, yeah, no one can move you. You're done. Fuck. And bro. obviously, people were hitting my my arms, whatever people were stepping on. It didn't matter. I couldn't feel none of that shit. <laughs> It was like, man. We got to give this guy the toad, man. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not ready for that. use the toad. What is well, the toad? shit, bro. Oh, go on. I'm sorry, man. No, no, no. Toad, it's all good. Toad, the toad? toad? toad yeah. Fuck. The toad. 
The toad, the Sonoran Desert Toad, also known as Bufo alvarius. Its venom is collected for this molecule called 5-MeO-DMT. Mm. You ever done DMT? No. What the fuck is that? Even mm. DMT is a psychedelic yeah, entheogenic buddy. compound that we produce it in our bodies. I've read some recent studies. I used to say that we produce it in our pineal gland, but that's not actually – nobody actually knows if that's true or not. <coughs> but you get two hits of DMT in your life once – when you come into being in your mother's womb and then once on your deathbed. So they say it's the portal of the soul. And so this toad, it has this in its venom. And they collect it and you can vaporize it. And it cures people of addiction and depression and the fear of death. And you experience God. You go to the source and Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. you see your life flash in front of your Jesus eyes. So is, you have an is, ego death. Is DMT illegal or is it is it over the counter? Uh, I think it's illegal. You can d do it ceremonially. You can go to like Brazil or and do ayahuasca. That's where DMT is. Okay. That's like so. How does the, the toad, toad okay. is the top of the pyramid? Oh shit! So the toad they call it the god molecule. Under that DMT is the spirit molecule. Yeah, I did that. It's a month. You did DMT. Or you did, did I did the toad. toad. That's why we're talking about DMT toad is chain. free. DMT, that was fun. I had a ball with DMT. The toad is serious shit. Where'd you, where'd you, where'd you, where'd you first try the toad at? I tried it in a, a, a close area in Mexico somewhere. But listen, right? With a shaman. With a shaman. Listen, when I did this thing, right? Because I thought I did all kinds <laughs> of drugs before. I said, I'm going to do this shit. This shit is nothing. I'm on cocaine right now. How can this shit hurt me? So I do this shit and I said, oh, shit. I'm dead. I died the fucking I was dead. I just fuck I was dead. I couldn't feel my body. My body was gone. Nothing existed no more. And it was gone. I said, fuck and Did you did you lick the toad or what did you do with your face? I, I smoked Smoke it. it. How how much? Like is it is it in oil? Is it it's like I, I, I did two hundred and fifty milligrams. It's like a, it's like uh it's like crystallized. Yeah, it's a trip. I like to smoke it in the joint one day. No, oh, you'd like to? Yeah, I'm. I'm let me figure. <laughs> Hold on. So, so you use lighter then? Use lighter yes, than you? Yes. Do? Okay. And like a vape. And how long is a like high a last? Glass. Twenty minutes. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, man. No, but listen, listen. That's what. Hey, listen. Time. In your mind, once you do the drug, right? It's um, it's all day. It's no time. You're, you're in the middle of time and space. Nothing exists. You don't know what time is. Then you wake up. It's twenty minutes. You swim by. If it lasts more than 20 minutes, it might, it might get a heart attack. So your consciousness, the way you perceive the world, the, the lens that you project and you experience everything in, is separate from your body. You become body. a god, kind of. Everything, every, every secret you know is exposed. Everyone knows it. But it's you got, tied. You got the every, everything that you don't want nobody to know is exposed. Everybody knows. You got the feelings. Everybody knows in your business. Everything. <laughs> Your consciousness is tied to your physical you can't even body imagine by fucking... your ego. Have you tried it? I've done DMT. I haven't done the toad. I haven't been called to the toad, but I, you know. Oh, you can't just go do it. it. It's it's some special shit. Like you have. No, to no, you could. No, I mean, you, you could do, do it anytime it. you want. To. You can go seek it out, and you could do it. When you I mean, did, I'm gonna do it at when you, some when, point. When you did DMT, yeah, it was I, it was a, no, that was like an eight hour. Trip. Oh, See, when I did shit. DMT, I did the one where you smoke. You smoke it. And that's another. Laugh. That's like fifteen minutes too. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you're doing it, last. Does it give? Yeah. You, is it like a? Is it like a coke hyper high, or is it kind of like no, a chill listen. high? It's like a connection. The toad is like it's man, like another, you're in another different do yeah, domain. Another you're not thing. even on the planet no more. <laughs> um, Listen, you don't see your body. You only got feelings. You don't see. There's no body. Just to this day, the only drug I've never done in my life is heroin. Is because I thought I'd like it too much and I don't that. like throwing up. But what I'm saying, it's the only thing I've never done. I've done everything else. Yeah. Now I've never done DMT and fucking and toad. So I don't oh, know. That's, shit, man. That's it's a totally crazy. different high. Powerful the natural stuff. high. You ain't gonna get hurt. It ain't gonna hurt you. No, but you're gonna think everything's happened to you. You think that like you think you know shit. You seen bitches. You've been over the world. You seen things. You you seen the world, right? Yeah. What, really, a motherfucker really can't tell you shit. Really. I mean, listen. Tell yeah. the truth, really. <laughs> For the most part, that might be true. I feel like you, it. When you get the toad, you gotta find. I don't know shit. Oh wow! I need that. 
Oh, yes, you do. Trust me, I did too. I needed That's to do it because I thought I knew shit. Yeah. I thought I was a bad nigga. Nigga, I've been all the way. Most niggas ain't seen the way I've been fucked with. I've been a drink with. I've been a been who I've been with. And then, and then I did the told and found that I'm nothing. I've never seen anything, never be anybody. Now, let me ask you a question. Were you just sitting in a room or were you like, were you out? No, I was laying down. They had to lay you down because you move around, you might fucking hurt yourself. Because see, I had a part. So you have to lay down on the bed or on the floor. And then um, God starts talking to you. What the f- Oh, man, bro. So, so some people scream, no! Oh, God, please, no! Some people scream, so everybody's different. Everybody's fucking Couldn't different. Have, you know what he said that fucked me up the worst? Every secret about you ever. Oh, that knows. killed me. Can you imagine? Yeah. You wow. don't listen, and you think, and then this more I know what happened. You got all that feeling. Oh God, please! Oh, I don't want to be no. Oh God! Oh no! Once you stop, nobody gives a fuck. Nobody's wrong. Damn. Nobody's right. There's no law. There's no space. There's no time. Everything that we're learning now in the physical world is a fucking lie. Twenty minutes, bro. That's like. No, you know what it's like. In twenty minutes, it's like. 1,500 years of experience in fucking 20 minutes. Imagine how fast that's going. I couldn't imagine. It's going so fast. Whoa! You're looking at you. Wow. It's fast. I'm fucked up right now. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. We should get some lunch. I'm down. Lunch is good, guys. Hey, brother. Do you want anybody to know how to find you? Or um, watch anything new you're going on? Where can they check out the VVS pens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what uh, you this. should do, right? Before you think, you should make something that should be like, listen, the fucking, the Bob Baller shit. Whatever it is, this is your emblem. And everybody should have this. If you think you're down, you're in the hood, you went in the streets, you should have this. Everybody would know you down if you have one of these. Okay. You gotta have, one of, you gotta have one of those pens, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's something Remember I Death Row had that? They had people taking them. Saying, if you had that, you were the cool. No matter if you stole one or you bought one or whatever. If you yeah. had a Death Row emblem, you were the man. For sure. Um, I mean, it's pretty easy. You know, uh, uh, on any kind of social media, Ben Ball is my actual name. I think I'm more active on the stories than I'm on the posts. I'm a little weird now because... I think I exposed a little too much of my personal life and I didn't really want people to know. Like, So now you might not necessarily know what I'm doing, but you know I'm a dad. You know, and you know that I make jewelry. You know that I own a, a cannabis brand. But yeah, no. Ben Baller, at Ben Baller, at anywhere on social. Um, and uh, yeah, my, my VVS uh, pens company is ordervvs.com. Order VVS. And then uh, VVS pens on Instagram. And yeah, man, we're just, I'm out here doing this. And um I you know I get down with some nonprofits here and there, but I do something more personal instead of having going through funnels and channels of people. I just pick out random people like a family that, because I think about how expensive it is to go to a Laker game, and I heard this comedian talk about oh back in the day I go to the Knicks game I'll go get some beer I'll do this this and this, and it cost him like seventeen dollars for the whole night. I'm mm -hmm. like you fucking kidding me? Like I go to the movies with my wife it's fucking two hundred fifty bucks yeah, you know, yeah. and it's like going to a Laker game and I'm talking about sitting in the middle. I'm talking about blow nosebleeds and nowhere near the front levels. You know, it's just going to cost a family of four. It's going to cost them, you know what I'm saying, maybe $2,000, whatever it is. So sponsor some families. I like to do, if that's like little small things, I like to do that. That's dope, man. Yeah, and you know, Love and, 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 and um, I just like traveling because when I see how other cultures live, and I see how that goes, man, that's where I can become more, obviously, obviously become worldly. And I like to see how they, how they live, how they eat and their culture. I just like to really soak up a lot of the knowledge of the world. And it gives me a better Have you noticed this? When you go to certain parts of the world, people have nothing but they're happy. Yeah. Have you seen that in the why? Yeah. Because they don't expect anything. Oh, that's we, true. We expect everything. Yeah. You know, we expect things. So most, some things don't go out. We're having a good time and stuff. But if I don't get my million dollar car, fuck y'all guys. My day <laughs> is a little fucked up. No, you know what? That's terrible. Because Phil Jackson in his book, he said... Uh, Never have any expe expectations, you know, I'd be disappointed. And I say, man, yeah, but fuck that. I demand more out of life. You know, I feel like I, dem I put a lot of work and I should get this done. And some people don't speak up. Like you said, they're just they're happy and they're content. And I wish I was that. Sometimes I think about it like my boy who from my hood who works at Trader Joe's. Genuinely, he's a pretty happy guy. You know, I'm sure he wants more here and there, but he's cool. Like he's content, cool. He has no extra stress. Me, my job don't stop at 6 p.m., you know what I'm saying? That shit goes to fucking 1 a.m., 4 a.m., 3 a.m. I got people hitting me up from, from Africa, from fucking Australia, all over the world. Uh, all their hours are fucked up. And, you know, people, they're just... And it's like, damn, as much as I don't like to talk, I do a lot of talking on, 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 on interviews and things. And, like, I mean, 
listen, if 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 you're watching this podcast and and you run social media or, or relations for a college or high school, and you want me to come down and speak about you know being an entrepreneur, getting out of the hood, let me know. I'll do it for free. You know what I mean? If if it's local, unless you know. But but I'm I, I've been speaking at schools and talking That's to kids because they're like, yo, I don't know what the fuck I want to do with life. And somebody's going to listen. Somebody's Absolutely. Going, somebody's going to become one of the greatest fucking um, jury makers in the history. Absolutely. That'd be great. Man. That's what happens. That's what they, they have to see somebody first. Yep. Yeah. You know? That's where it's at. They have, they have to see you first, brother. Once they see you, they can achieve you. Thank you, bro. Thank you very much. I, You're the man, Thank dude. you very much. God bless. Much Mike, love. Mike, great app, man. Uh, yeah, awesome, man. Take us out, big brother. All right, y'all. Thank you for watching this episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Evan Britton. And I'm Mike Tyson. And I'm Ben Baller. Be sure to subscribe to Benny our YouTube Baller. channel, <laughs> Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. Check us out on iTunes as well. Until next time, y'all, we're out of here. Ben Baller. Beautiful. I got, man, this is crazy.